Good morning. Good morning. So happy to be here again this morning in the Amen. service of the Lord. Bad weather on the outside, but oh, it's real good on the inside. Yes. Amen. Amen. This is one time we can say it's good to be on the inside looking out. Isn't it? <laughs> to be out on the outside looking in. <clears throat> Had a good night's rest last night and feel lots better this morning. And uh, we had a wonderful time last night. Yes. Amen. It was a wonderful time. And I appreciate that. We've had this service look like it has been one like was down at Shreveport, almost just a, a continuation of the following of the Spirit going right along. Hallelujah. So we are very happy and so thankful to God for His goodness and mercy and for your, you people uh, giving your spirit over to Him in cooperation so that He can lead us and guide us. See, if you got a resenting uh, uh, audience, the Holy Spirit won't even reveal. you got to have something at working together. They were in one place and in one accord. Then there came a sound from heaven. Amen. 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 But when you got, no matter how much I'd pray and lay day and night studying and praying before the Lord walk down here made the anointing on me walk up here and feel that resentment see he, he just he just grieves him right away he won't reveal nothing but when you walk down here and under the anointing and feel your audience under the anointing that's when the Holy Spirit begins to work then he begins to move and do great things for us I haven't talked to the pastor yet <clears throat> about I heard only believing so I just run in <laughs> See what he was, he had figured out for this morning. Now, Brother Neville, I'll tell you what. I start on this little class, and if I get through by 11 o'clock, okay, you take over and start preaching. How's that? Yes, don't disturb the anointing. Oh, well, maybe the anointing back here. The anointing back here also. <laughs> He's a, hey, man, I'm doing uh, Brother Neville has always, to the strangers here, may not have been here before, He's a, not saying it to his face, but a gracious person. Amen. Always been that way. He always reads that, uh, that, lives that scripture, preferring one another. Always in Christ. Always preferring. And ever since I've known him, he's been that way. Not since he's just been your tabernacle, but ever since I knew him, and that's been many years ago. First time I believe I ever remember seeing Brother Neville to know him, I went to hear him preach one time down at the... The Methodist Church he, uh, down in Howard Park many, many years ago. Been, I guess, 20 years, I guess, ago or more since I knew him. And he, and he was, uh, he's worked too, he's, oh, I guess so recently, he's always worked there in the forestry and things up in Henryville where he's from. I worked for his living, preach on the side the way I'd done my life too till recently and then we got started out where we couldn't do nothing else but this, so... I'm glad. Yeah, I'm glad of our new boss, aren't you, brother? Yeah. Yes, sir. I sure like it. Yes, sir. I'm just so satisfied with him. And um, now I believe they're going to omit the Sunday school class. Yes, the children's Sunday school class. They are going to omit it because of the room has cut the petitions out, so it just lets the church go right on back. <clears throat> Now tonight we're going to have the final great age of this Lady Ocean. And last night we took the Philadelphia age and come over into the beginning of the Lady Ocean age. And the lap over. And then the great mysteries that God began to reveal to us between those ages. The open door and the little strength help my word got my name all those little things in there how God did so marvelously make them real to us to which we are very very thankful <clears throat> and don't forget if there's any visitors among us that have sick people we'll be having a prayer for the sick next Sunday a week from today and that'll if the Lord willing and that'll be a uh, you always notice I like to put that the Lord willing. The Bible says to do that, if the Lord is willing. We don't know yet. He has never told me that I'd be here and the church would be here and we'd all be here or what more. Then if it's His will, we'll be here, see. If it isn't His will, of course we won't. Brother Neville will be continually announcing it on his broadcast and different ones. I guess the brother here and the ones that has the broadcast. And then come in early as you can Sunday morning because we're looking for a good crowd here to be prayed for. And we want to uh, come in. We'll 
Well, let's see. I, if there's a big crowd like this, it's always best to have prayer cards because they're so jammed together. You just one pushing around the other and things like that. I think if you just have it orderly, so they just come one by one, it makes keeps the confusion down amongst the people, you know. And uh, and just you don't even have to get up to your cards call. Just sit right where you are. If you're sick and feeling bad, you won't have to stand a long line. Just when your cards call, just come out right on up and be prayed for and go down. Another one come up like that. I like that a whole lot better. <clears throat> I usually have the boys to set some chair. If somebody feels bad while they're waiting, call up a few at a time. They feel bad. Well, I just let them let them wait there in their chair until them I sit in the chair until their numbers call until they can be prayed for. <clears throat> I do believe in divine healing. Amen. It's one of the great doctrines of the Bible. Amen. But divine healing has more to it than just divine healing. Divine healing only says that there is a God who's coming again. What does divine healing speak of? It's the earnest of our resurrection. Amen. If there's no divine healing, then there is no resurrection. Amen. See? And if there is no Holy Spirit now to baptize us, there is no eternal life in the world to come. The Bible said this is the earnest of our salvation. And you know what the earnest is? Is the down payment. See, if you go down and pay, say you bought a farm, they wanted ten thousand dollars for it, and you pay two thousand. That's your earnest money. They call it the earnest of it. Now. If uh, this baptism of the Holy Spirit is just the earnest on what's coming, oh, what will it be when we, when we get the full uh, prize? It'll be glory. Now this morning we're going to uh, try to tie the Lord willing some of those things in of the um, uh, between the church ages. These right in here, there's something goes in the 144,000, the remnant, the sleeping. Virgin, the wise virgin, and the sealing of the Holy Ghost, marking of the beast, all those things. Just, it's the end of the age. And everything falls right in here in one place. So that, therefore, we ought to have just the rest of the winter to take this out. Amen. But we, to get the book of Revelation, see how it ties together. Did you ever notice civilizations travel the same way, Mr. Wood? It's, um, this man has got his same senses. He's got six senses or five senses rather that he's had since he um, since he come on the earth 6,000 years ago but right here in the last just the last little bit last hundred years my he come back there moving slow in an ox cart but from that ox cart in the past hundred years he's went from an ox cart to a, a rocket of five, nearly 2,000 miles an hour that's how fast he's picked up from the ox cart to the rocket. And look, it's just only been the last few years. Well, I'd say not much over 50 years ago. When I was a little boy up here on a Utica Pike, they had an old this fellow named Elmer Frank used to live over here. He's kind of attorney at law. He married a young lady up there on the road that my father worked for her, for her father. Her name was Lusher. And they... Um, and he had a some kind of an automobile. It had a crank. He got out on the side of it and cranked it like this. And it only had one gear. And he had a, a big rubber thing for a horn. You blow it like that. And they said that thing would go the terrific speed of 19 miles an hour. Now, Papa went out and got some sand down in the wagon and it bring it up there and put in sacks so he could hold it down and see if it actually go 19 miles an hour. <laughs> but you already seen the roads. <laughs> It would only go about ten this way and nine up and down this way. <laughs> so get it together, you got 19 miles an hour. I remember all of us kids, mom would wash us all up, about five of us then, would hang on that fence to hear it. We hear it coming miles away, way down here, roar, 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 roar. Everybody stop and get their horses and I'll get out the buggy and hold them like, you know, that thing coming up the road. <laughs> it was a terrific thing. <laughs> and... And I just think that was back, I was about seven years old, see, uh, how, about 1914. And just think of how that things has changed since then. And see, and it's just been the last 40 years or something. And look, he had 6,000 years to do all that with right here because the Bible said that he'd do it that way. The last days, they'd run to and fro and knowledge shall increase. 
Did you ever think of Nahum when he, he saw outer drive in Chicago 4,000 years ago? He did. He said they would jostle through the broadways. Now, the, I've been in the old countries where they had the, their streets like in Oslo and different places. There hardly is room to walk. It's just big enough for a, a chariot to go through in their cities. Uh, probably the distance would be about from here to that wall is all the wider the streets was. Just wide enough for a chariot to go through the street. Well, see, Nahum said they were Broadways and said they would run like lightning, <laughs> these carriages. And uh, they would seem like torches. That's the uh, lights on them. And said they'd jostle one against another. <laughs> the wrecks. That prophet raised up above the time Look way in there for 4,000 years and saw that coming. Amen. Think of that. <laughs> Inspiration. But we're at the end time, friends. It's just, and so is the Scripture. Be it all these things that happen, all the Scriptures laying right in here in this end time, right here. Now, I thought this morning, if God would help us, we'd tie these, some of these things in as many as we could. And then tonight, that great last age of the Lady of Sin Church how it receives its message. And then goes on off and ignores its message right straight into a lukewarm condition that God spews from his mouth. He, in other words, it makes him sick at his stomach. He <laughs> think of it. I'll spew thee from my mouth, he said. Now, <clears throat> I've got some scriptures written down here that I'd like to refer to this morning. But I wonder if it'd be too hard on us just for a moment to stand for a word of prayer. <clears throat> Our gracious Heavenly Father, as we come again this morning on this Sabbath day, and outside the rain uh, begin trickling down in the icy, cold wind of blowing, but we're so glad that we have a roof over our head today. Uh, we have a little place and still a nation that where we can come and worship God any way that our conscience tells us to worship. Then we see in thy word that this isn't going to last very long. So, Father, we pray that you'll anoint us especially today, that we might get the best out of this that there is for us to get, and be prepared for the hours that lay ahead, when we'll not be able to do this. We don't know how much longer. It may be in weeks, months, or years. We do not know, but sometime we'll not be able to do this. So we pray, Father, that you'll keep us under thy divine directing. Amen. And may our thoughts be upon thee and the meditations of our heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord. Amen. Forgive our sins. We ask that as we confess them to thee, that we have sinned and erred from the way, and we're not worthy to be called yours. Only make us your hard servants, Lord. And we'll be willing to do anything that you tell us to do, any task that's laid upon us. We're willing to do it. Only receive us into thy kingdom, Lord. That we can work in this great, terrific hour that faces the world. Bless us now with thy presence. Teach us by thy Holy Spirit and get glory from our being here together. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now I would like to... First, I'd like to recognize every one of my friends in here. I've been noticing around this morning. It's so hard here in the nighttime. Our lighting's back in behind those hanging down places, and it doesn't show the people. And it's kind of hard to see off this pulpit at night here. And it is also in daytime. I see many of our friends that's out from different parts of the country that I can recognize them better today than I could at nighttime. And it'd be too many to try to call them all, but I want you to know that I certainly appreciate you. And after all this hard cutting and so forth as I've had to do in the Scriptures to, make, to bring out the truth, not what I wanted to do, but what God has got written here to do. See? And that, that's it. And yet I see many of my brethren who belong to organizations and so forth sitting right with me at. So I appreciate you very, very much. God ever bless you and help you is my prayer. And now, 
Yes, brother. I might have the permission of the church to speak on behalf of all the people here. We want you to know that we appreciate you. Thank you, brother. Yes, we love you. Thank you, brother Stricker. We're praying for the grace to go through the things that you might have to go through, that we might stand by your side. Amen. Thank you, brother Stricker. Amen. Thank you, church. That's mighty nice you to say that. I appreciate that very highly. Someone was saying last night about, I believe it was Brother Fred that called me up and said about um, uh, the vision or the dream of some brother had. It told it just before leaving last night, seeing standing on the arch of the earth in a black cloud rolling at you. Yeah, I know he's at you, me. <clears throat> but that just as long he he won't be able to do it until God is finished. And then, Amen. And I, I, it's time for me to go then. Amen. So, but I, I think of this can never be great. No, I don't want to be. See, but I think of the psalm of life. Lives of great men all remind us. See, what Paul did, what Irenaeus did, what Luther did, what Wesley did, what St. Martin did, and what they did and lives of great men all remind us that we can make our lives sublime with partings leave behind us footprints on the sands of time Amen. footprints that perhaps another while sailing over life's solemn main for after I'm gone see gone on some forlong and shipwrecked brother pick up one of these books to read in seeing shall take heart again that's it Amen. let us be up then in doing with a heart for any strife I like that don't you Amen. be not like dumb driven cattle had to be drove to it be a hero in the strife I, I like that Amen. now <clears throat> our little brother George used to have that when he liked uh, had it at his funeral service We'd use, I'd sit and quote the psalm of life, you know, and he'd sit and quote crossing the bar. See, you've heard that. Sun setting, evening star, and one clear call for me. And may there be no morning at the bar when I put out to sea. You've heard it many times. For all without is moved of time and space, the floods may bear me far. But I hope to see my pilot face to face when I cross the bar. I'm sure he did when he crossed the bar. Amen. And so, then mine is partings leave behind me, footprints on the sands of time, so others seeing can come along, take heart, and keep going. For some great day, Jesus will come. And that's what we're going to study about this morning. It'll all be over there. Glory to God. Now, I thought this morning, in order that we are not going to be able in these church messages. Now, maybe if the Lord willing, soon I might have another little series of meetings upon the true and false church all the way from Genesis, take it through the Bible and sweep it right down through Revelations. Amen. The both churches, just what they're going to do. And then maybe someday when we, if the Lord willing, we get the church built so we can have a little more seating room. You'd be surprised how many's called in and said like that. They just drive by and it's all filled up so they just go on and see. And so uh, they, uh, we don't have the room. And maybe like some in the summertime when it's hot weather or something where we get the high school gym or something, be nice to take the book of Revelations in or something, a book of Daniel and Revelations and tie it together so we could have it. Now, we never got to deal with the Jewish people. The Jews were, uh, as I said, in the, in the dark age of 1500, the uh, Catholic hierarchy, when they was established in United Church and State together, that was a post-millennium. They thought that they were, they were absolutely in the millennium because the church had received its biker, one like Christ, to sit on a throne, and um, it would unite with the church and state. All had become well, and the great millennium was on. They still believe that. But that's an error. Because the millennium can't come, can't be uh, issued in without the coming of Christ. Christ brings in the millennium. Amen. He's the son of prosperity. And when he comes in, will be a thousand years. And when it is, it'll be the rapture of the church. It'll go up. And then the return of Christ. And remember now, what's the next thing we're looking for? The rapture of the church. 
Now don't get the rapture of the church and the white throne judgment mixed up. Because the rapture of the church, there is no judgment. Amen. You done met it right down here. <laughs> That's right. Well, they which are in Christ are free from judgment. Jesus said, He that heareth my words and believeth on him that sent me has eternal life and shall never come into the judgment but has passed from death unto life. Amen. How do we do that? We come into Christ and are baptized into one body. 1 Corinthians 12. One body, we're baptized into the body of Jesus Christ, and God has already judged that body. Amen. Amen. He could not stand us in judgment again because He's already judged that body, and by the permission and grace of Christ, He brings us into Himself. 1 Corinthians 12. By one Spirit, we're all baptized into that one body and free from all judgments. Because he's Amen. understood the judgments. Oh, aren't you so thankful for him? He took the judgments for us. No more judgment. But those who refuse to come into him, that body, the mystical body, how do we get into it? By shaking hands? Boom. By letter? No. By some sort of baptism? Water? No. By one Spirit. Holy Spirit. We are all baptized into that body. Now remember, we're going to deal on that sharper this morning. You're either in that body or out of that body. No halfway between it. There's no pretty good Christians and and uh, you're either Christians or you're not Christian. There's no uh, black white bird. No drunk sober man. You can't have it. You're either a Christian or not a Christian. Amen. You're either in Christ or out of Christ. Yeah. Now, this may seem teaching. I'm not. I'm a long way from being a teacher, but teaching is cutting. That's a special gift in the in the body of Christ. First is apostles, and then prophets, then teachers, and evangelists. Pastors, five ministerial gifts in the body, and teaching is one of the gifts of the Spirit. Now, I just have to plug along uh, what I see that's right and try to bring it to the people and study and bring the Scriptures together. Now, but it's only in Christ, the body of Christ, is to be recognized. Now, the first three chapters of Revelations deals with the church, the Gentile, Jewish, uh, Ethiopian, African, every type of people in the world goes to the Gentiles to make up this body. Black, white, brown, everything. It's a bouquet of flowers. That's right, that God puts on His altar. And that's made up of all nations, kindreds, tongues, and people. But now... After you leave the third chapter, the church ages here, God comes back and picks up the Jews. The church never appears no more during that age. It's the Jews. And God don't deal with the Jews as individuals. He deals with Israel as a nation. Always as a nation. That's how someone got the other day. I've got a lot of letters on that hybrid religion. But I made a remark over in the Bible said that an illegitimate called bastard child could not enter the congregation of the Lord for ten generations, which would be four hundred years. That an illegitimate child could not come into the congregation of the Lord. That's how bad the high breeding was. That was a woman that let another man live with her in order to bring forth a child. And that child was hybrid, not by its father, but by some other man. See? And that was so evil before God had taken ten generations to ever breed that out again. Before God. But <clears throat> that doesn't apply to this age. You have a new birth now. Amen. They don't. They had just one birth back there. That's an actual sexual breeding. We have this new birth now, which is a spiritual that breeds out all the call. Amen. And we are new creatures in Christ Jesus, Amen. born again of the Spirit of God. Amen. New creatures. On the word creature, if some of you good scholars here that understand, if you don't, you might look it up. The creature comes from the Greek word of a new creation. Oh, the same as you are a creature here, born sexually, you are then a new creation, born heavenly. Amen. A, God's new creation of a new man. Amen. <coughs> new creation. 
That's a birth. But it has to be a birth. Just the same as the natural birth is necessary, the spiritual birth is just as necessary as the natural birth. A young couple might get married and say, our first little boy, we're going to call John. If he's never born, John's never here. That's all. Amen. Same thing, you might have mythical ideas you build up about heaven, how great it is. If you're not born again, you'll not be there. Amen. That's all. Okay. It's just got to be that way because it's got to be a birth. God has laid His laws down and everything works according to His laws. Okay. Now, in the, these, uh, there is a remnant of Jews to be saved. And we're going to take them first because it places... Now, there's always three classes of people all the time, constantly. And keep, bear them in mind. That is the, the uh, believer, myth-believer, and unbeliever. All those three. And there is a Jew, which is a cast-off, because, giving us a chance, there is a lukewarm church, and there is a spirit-filled church. Amen. One time, Charlie Bohannon was president of the, uh, or superintendent of the Southern Districts of the Public Service Company when I worked for him. I was just studying in the scriptures as a boy. And he said, Billy, anybody said, John must eat some red pepper and had a nightmare out there on a, on a hollow patmos. I said, Mr. Bohannon, you shouldn't have said that. He's my boss, supervisor. He said, well, who in the world could understand that? I said, it's understood. It'll be understood when the Holy Spirit's ready to reveal it. That's right. And um, he said, oh, my. I said, I tried to read it. And my pastor tried to read it. and said, we got such an awful fix. He said, we had the, the bride sitting on Mount Sinai. See? And said, then we had the bride with the dragon spurting water out of his mouth to make war with the rim of the woman's seed. We had the bride up in heaven. <laughs> All three at the same time. <laughs> I said, that's without spiritual understanding. He said, well, there they are, all the three at the same time. I said, yes, sir. But that's not the way they were placed. See, you called the 144,000 the bride, which they wasn't. They was the Jews. Amen. And the one that the ragged spurred water out of his mouth to make war, which was the remnant, the leftovers of the woman's seed that kept the commandments and had the testimony of Jesus. And the bride was in glory. See? 144,000, 14th chapter of Revelation is standing on Mount Sinai. That's exactly true. Having the Father's name in their forehead. That's exactly right. The Jew, the remnant of the Jew. And then here comes the dragon, the Roman hierarchy, which the church itself have been raptured in glory at the wedding supper for three and a half years. Then the dragon. See, the dragon is always Rome. The red dragon. Now, to make that sure to you, and, and Revelation 12, the dragon was wroth with the woman that was to bring forth the man-child that's to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And he spurted water out of his mouth and, uh, uh, to make war with the rim of the sea. But the red dragon first, he stood before this woman. As soon as a woman was to deliver this child, he was to devour that child as soon as he brought it forth. Now, who stood before the Israelite church, the woman, Israel, to devour her child, Jesus, as soon as it was born? Rome. Herod. Issued a proclamation that everybody was to kill every child from two-year-old down. They want to slaughter through to kill all the Hebrew children throughout the country. Very same thing that Pharaoh done. To catch Moses, which was the type of him. Slaughtered all the children and missed him. <laughs> God knows how to hide them. Oh, aren't you glad you're hid? Oh, a hiding place. Hallelujah. The Bible said, For you must reckon yourself dead and your life in Christ, hid in Christ, and sealed away by the Holy Ghost. The devil couldn't find you if he had to. He just couldn't do it. You're hid in Christ. Reckon yourself dead and your lives are hitting Christ, hitting God through Christ and sealed by the Holy Ghost. Now, now this remnant was the sleeping virgin that he spurted the water from his mouth to make war with the remnant of the woman's seed. Now, what is a remnant? Now, there you, you have to get these types together now. There is a church which is church natural. I'm going, maybe I can draw it here and make it a little bit plainer. Uh, Brother Neville, if I take up some of your time, uh, I don't have it. 
<laughs> there is a... <laughs> now remember that there is the what the unbeliever. I put that you be unbeliever, and uh, that's the sinner. And here is another one, which is a formal. I put F O formal church. And then here is the other one, which is the saved church. S A the saved church. Now keep them in mind all the time. Now in this saved church, there's two classes in this church right here and right here, which was tight by Christ. One of them was a sleeping virgin, and the other one had oil in the land. I, y'all, how many remembers the story? We're going to get to it in just in a minute. Now first, before we do that, we're going to the 144,000 of Revelation 7, so that it can really be understood... Now you must remember this, and you it's marking it down. <coughs> Revelation seven. Let's just kind of take our time, and, and you, you're not going to baptize the, the after service this morning. All right, we'll. Um, I'll try to lay my watch up here and watch what time it is, so we can get out. Now we got we got around almost two hours now. The Lord help us to give us a study. After these things. Now we the sixth chapter deals with the with the white horse, which was the Holy Spirit went forth conquering to conquer. Then come the pale horse, death and hell followed it, and each one of those riders on the horses. Now after these things, after this great destruction, first went forth with the Holy Ghost across the earth, conquering and to conquer. Then come the one in the great famine time, measure of wheat for a penny, two measures of barley for a penny, and um. So forth, but don't hurt my oil and wine. And then on down till he opened these these seals. After these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds that they should not blow up on the earth or on the sea or any tree. And I saw another angel descending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was hurt. It was given to hurt the sea and the earth, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea or tree, until we have sealed the servants of our God in their forehead. Now remember, the servants has always been God's servants is the Jew. Abraham was his servant. The Gentile is not a servant. It's a bride. It's a son. This is the son. The church is. The Jews are the servants. Oh, if you could just... We just had time to comb them words out. A lot of times they're doing the room there. Run it all the way through the references and get it up. The Jews are a servant. If I stand here and take up all that time on a servant, I don't hit the other spots, you see. So, just remember, trace that through the Bible. You'll find that the Jew is God's servant. What a beautiful parallel here we could run. If we want to get back to Ezekiel 4... And find out there that he said, Has anything like this happened before? He looked at the higher walls. And when he did, he seen abominations done in the city. And there went, come forth four men with slaughtering weapons. And they went forth to slaughter everything through the city of Jerusalem. And before he, they went to slaughter, the hell stopped them, for there was another one came dressed in white with a rider's ink horn. How many ever read that? Amen. At his side. Ezekiel 4. Then, had this rider's ink horn at his side dressed in white. He said, don't go into the city, don't slaughter anything until first you have sealed the servants of God in their forehead. And he went forth and he sealed, even said to the little children and everything, sealing them, and then the ones with the slaughtering weapons, four of them coming, went in and absolutely demolished everything, had no pity. They slaughtered men, women, children, and everything and had not this seal of uh, this first uh, man with the acorn rider that sealed away. And the, now that was in the days after our Lord. When he warned them of it in Matthew 24, how that when you see Jerusalem compassed about with armies, don't let don't come down off the housetop or let him that's in the field come out back and get his coat, but go into Judea. Josephus gives a writing of it there. 
and how they fled. And only those escaped was those who had taken the words of the Lord Jesus. Amen. And when they seen the armies come past, and Titus in AD 96, when they seen Titus come past the walls of Jerusalem, hemmed them all in there, they eat the grass off the tree. They eat the bar- bark off the trees. They eat the grass off the ground. They absolutely bore one of the children and eat it. They starved him and set him in there. And finally, they run in there and slaughter him to the blood right out the gate like a, like a pool was coming down. Streams of blood flowing out the gate. They burnt the temple, tore down the walls, and it stands there to this day. And the Moslem of Omer was erected where the temple stood. And Jesus spoke of that, Matthew 24. He said, when you see the abomination that make a desolation standing in the holy place where the prophet Daniel spoke, said about it, and then he said, Princess, that he that readeth, let him understand. See, when you see this abomination, the filthiness of the Muslim of Omer standing there, where the holy place once stood, and today the Muslim stands there exactly where the holy place, right on the temple site. The Mohammed Muslim stands, as Jesus said it would do, as Daniel said it would do, and Jesus verified it that it would do. What's them prophets and God there foretelling those things, brother? It ought to raise the hair on the back of our necks to know that we're in the end time. We're at the end. There's nothing left. All these things happening just as He said they would. What ought to encourage us? Make us get ready. He said, Jesus warned us that when you see these things coming to pass, like we're talking about, He said, lift up your head, your redemption's drawing nigh. And what would it do us any good if we gained the whole world? Amen. We're going to lose it anyhow. We, we can't win like that. There's only one winning, that's through Christ. Amen. Take Christ and you're bound to win. You've got to leave here. You may leave before this service is over. You may leave before the sun sets tonight. You may go before it rises in the morning. Before next Sunday, you may be gone, all of us. We don't know when we're going. But you know you've got to go. So isn't it a foolish thing to put it off? You're, you're tramping, you're, you're flirting with death. Like the old toboggan slide. You used to get on a toboggan, go around this thing, see how close they come. All at once before they went down the slide, they went. That's just what you're doing. You're sliding right around. You don't know what minute something's going to upset you and you're gone. Heart stop. Automobile accident. If anything happened, and you die, and then your eternal destination lays right ahead of you. Think of that, friend. Now, when you see the abomination that make a desolation standing in the holy place, now... Then in the days of the coming of Titus, after Jesus had left, the Holy Spirit was that man with the ink horn at his side. And he went through Jerusalem and set a mark upon the people. And now I want you to notice something, church member. And you claim to have the Holy Spirit. He said, don't seal any of them, but then the sign cry for the abominations is done in the city. Amen. Now, where is anybody so burdened about the world now and the conditions? Well, I'm Methodist, I'm Baptist, Presbyterian, so what difference does it make, they say? Oh, not that constant burden for the lost. That sweetness. Don't never let anything rise up and put bitterness in your soul. No matter how bad anyone ever treats you or anything, don't never, don't be guilty of letting that thing anchor in your soul. It'll breathe the Holy Spirit away from you. It certainly will. I remember saying something here two or three years ago that was wrong. It was attorneys that called me. And I went and my wife sitting there. I, my head sent, feel like it's coming off. And I, I went back and they called on the phone and said, tell him to come down this afternoon. And he said, it's attorneys. I slipped outside the door. I said, tell him I'm not even here. She said, Bill. And I said, tell him I'm not in here right now. And I went out. Then I got out there and felt real bad. Come back, she told him. I'd seen it hurt her. I went out to pray for her. There's a man coming here, a little sick baby. Just as I started putting my hand on that baby, pray for it, something said to me, you're a hypocrite. See? You know what you did. And I said, sir, I'm not worthy to pray for your baby. See? The Holy Spirit's grieved him in. You don't need me to put my hands on the baby. Amen. You just wait till I go make something right. 
I went down and told, the, told my attorney, I said, I, I did it wrong. He said, I thought you was gone. I said, no, I said, that was, I caused my wife to say something wrong. I said, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, didn't, I didn't mean to do that. I said, will you forgive me for it? And asked the wife to forgive me for it. Then I went back up there at Green's Mill is in July. I was real still in the woods and I'd been in the cave all afternoon praying. I went and stood on the rock out there and I could look way across the hills and so pretty and leaves and everything. Just quite long, about five o'clock, six in the afternoon in the summertime. Nothing, been real still, hot day. And I said, Heavenly Father, Moses, you stood him in the rock one time and you passed by. I said, if you forgive me for that evil that I've done, could you just pass by again and let me see you? And just over to my left, on the side of the hill, there's a little whirlwind begin to blow real easy in the leaves. They come right down along the side of me like that, pass right down the woods. I just cried like a baby. Amen. I went back down. I said, I know my sin's forgiven me now. See, see, always keep all roots of bitterness out of you. See? No matter what anyone does to you, let just have God in there that'll keep all evil away from you. Now, these Christians that had the warning of Christ. I watch a type of the thing we're talking about this morning. These Christians that had that warning, they got out of Jerusalem for they know it was fixed to happen. Now watch the church members, the type of the people who went to church just joined church. They all said, wow, there's armies coming, there's war coming. Now let us go into the house of the Lord and pray, but they're too late. Didn't do a bit of good, see? But they're watching the warning, these disciples know what Jesus said, and they escaped. The historian said that the ones who was called cannibals, <laughs> they said they eat the body of, the, of this man called Jesus who used to heal them. See, they'd taken the communion. They didn't, he didn't know what it was, see, because he was a carnal man, not a believer, and uh, <clears throat> just a historian. And, he, uh, and they escaped the wrath that come up on the earth. Now, you see, and then all of Jerusalem was destroyed. Now, that, now this year is perfectly a parallel. Revelation 7. Now watch. From the time of Titus besieging Jerusalem within the world, there hasn't been a time down through history that all the world went to war until 1914. Now listen close. Now uh, here's where Mr. Rudford got off the wrong foot on, I'm sure, right here. Now watch, I, I, after these things I saw another angel, stand, uh, four angels standing on the four corners of the earth. That's standing like this, on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth. Now anybody knows what winds means in the Bible. Winds is war, strife. The devil is the power of the prince of the air, see? And holding the four winds that they shall not blow upon the earth or sea. And another angel descending from the east from which Jesus will come, having the seal of the living God in his forehand, in his hand. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels that was going to destroy the world, saying, uh, who has given hurt the sea and the earth, saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor trees until we have sealed the servants of our God in their forehead. Now, God don't have time. His is eternity. We measure the times. The only thing we know is inches and squares and miles and so forth. God's eternity. No beginning or end. See, He's, he's eternal. Now, in 1914, the whole world was marching into Germany for a world war. That's right. All the world to a world war. And did you notice? It was a strange thing. I want my good friend sitting here, Brother Wood's father, to get this clear. See? They was, um, he's a converted Jehovah Witness, you see. And so then, uh, this, all of them was marching to war, you well remember. In 19 and 14. Now, isn't it strange? Right in the decline of the world's war, I have the volumes of it, in volume 2, about page 44, that they do not know to this day who stopped that war. Kaiser Wilhelm said he never used to know such a thing. But all of a sudden it stopped and nobody knows why. They were fighting. Here come the up front, uh, uh, all, uh, come it was all over, the war was over, and they'd already signed a treaty of peace knowing not what happened. 
Now, of course, that would take a day or two to bring all that out. They didn't know. But let's bottle it and hit the high spot. It was God that stopped it Amen. to fulfill His Word. Amen. As that angel had stopped it. Amen. Those angels went forth to the slaughtering rib and watched it destroy the whole world. And another angel said, wait a minute. Don't do that. We've got to seal these servants of our God in their forehead first. That was just at the breaking of Pentecost. Back in 1906, 1914, down there, how many of the, is any old-timer Pentecost in here remembers them days? Back in there? Sure. When, in that early times, when the Holy Spirit had just begun to fall, and people began to receive the Holy Ghost and speak in tongues and pray for the sick and so forth, just began to happen there, just in between these two ages here. Just as it issued in, the church was real. Then the Pentecostals began to take denomination. The assemblies of God and the church of God and so forth and went off into their isms just like they are now. So it's we're at the end of the age, you see. All bottling down to the end. Everything runs right down here to the end. Now, on these, the fourth, you notice, it stopped on, um, on November the 11th at 11 o'clock in the day. The 11th month in the year the eleventh day in the month and the eleventh hour in the day. You remember that, what Jesus said about that? One went into the vineyard to work at one time. One got a penny. The next one went up and there's eleventh hour people. Was that right? There they are. The eleventh hour people. It's been held back. Now it's getting time for them to come in and they are gathering out of the Jews for a nation. Amen. They were scattered all over the world. Way down in Iran and different places where they'd never even know that Jesus was on the earth. Never know nothing about a New Testament or anything. And now you've been looking at Look Magazine and Life and I'm showing the pictures of them returning back. Didn't Jesus said, when you see the fig tree putting forth its buds? Amen. Jesus has always been the fig tree. Amen. This generation shall not pass until all these things be fulfilled. Amen. And now they're already back. Already a nation. Already got their own money, their own flag, and everything is recognized in the UN. They are a nation. Amen. She's settled. She's ready. Now, ready for what? The sealing of the 144,000. I will get to that just in a minute. Of Israel. Them Jews, not the Wall Street bunch that's always cheated and stole and everything else. I mean, real Jews. True Jews. That keep the commandments of God down there. Now... The real Jews are gathering into Palestine again. And just exactly what the prophet said, as Ishmael and Isaac were at one another's throats always fighting, predicted they'd be there on the last day, and there they sat. Amen. Ishmael right here, about a city block here, here's Isaac, and both of them, Mohammeds and Jews are fighting one another in an old man's land. Amen. Now, to see whether this message that we got is connected with it or not, the very hour that Israel was signed in to be a nation. It was the very same hour, very same day, very same month, everything else. I was at Greensville, Indiana, when that angel there appeared to me and sent me out on the field with this. Amen. 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 Actually, he had met me down on the river and told me what would take place. They commissioned me 11 years later at the same hour that Israel was signed in as a nation. Amen. It's all connected together. See, the angel of the Lord is on earth now. See, he's moving around, fixing everything for the coming of the Lord. And it's the same angels that's heard the sin when they went down to Sodom and they found, said, we have come down to see if these things are so, what we've heard. You remember that? Amen. And one angel went down in one state with Abraham, the elect. Sodom was down here and Lot was in Sodom. And two angels went down there and preached to them. And brought that little bitty group out, sleeping virgin. Amen. See? All right. But the one angel stayed with Abraham. Amen. This angel preached down here. A modern Billy Graham and then pulled him out. But the angel that stood with Abraham had his back to the tent. He said, Abraham, where's your wife Sarah? Amen. Amen. How do you know she's married? He's married. How do you know he had a wife? How do you know his name? her name was Sarah? Amen. Said, she's in the tent behind you. He said, uh, I made you a promise. I, <laughs> you see the angel, I made you a promise. I'm going to visit you according to the time of life. Sarah's going to have this baby. And Sarah in the tent behind him, laughed within herself. And the angel with his back turned said, Why did Sarah laugh? 
Amen. See the sign you give to elect church? Amen. See the sign they got in Sodom? Hallelujah. There's the three classes Hallelujah. again right back. We're right straight back to it again. Hallelujah. We got a, these great ministers that's covering that world out there. After Billy Graham received the Holy Ghost, he could not come out in the year. That's his seal down there and he recognizes it. Yeah. God's holding there. See? With that intellectual preaching, the thing that hears here, but he's trying to jerk out Sodom, trying to jerk out or give grace to that sleeping virgin. Amen. Yeah. But here was Abraham in his class, and Jesus said, as it was in the days of Sodom, so shall it be in the coming of the Amen. Son of Man. Hallelujah. See, those angels will be here on earth doing the same thing. Amen. See, that's the reason Billy goes to the Baptist and so forth like that. Has to. Hallelujah. See, Jack Schiller, all those great men, men out there that's going to be revivalists, they have to because they're, they're jerking out. they never done miracles down there. A few, like people smoke blind, but preaching the gospel smites them blind. See, the Bible says so. But this fellow out here done these signs, supernatural signs, to Abraham and his bunch was the church he left. Amen. Now, 1914, the world went to a war. And they have never been at peace since. Amen. Constantly swinging in, swinging in, swinging in. And they're doing the very same thing yet. And what was they doing? Holding. Oh, God have mercy. Holding that great thing that I saw in the vision, the whole thing become to destruction. Holding the atomic, holding the wars that it don't destroy themselves until the thing comes to destroy it until Israel returns back and gets herself together and then the message will go to Israel and she'll be sealed with that seal of the Holy Ghost. Amen. See? Hallelujah. After the Gentiles has called out the people for His name's sake, will be called out, which in this age right here they're called, Amen. then Israel only receives the three year and six months message. Amen. Daniel said so. Said there be, they would, there was 70 uh, or or seven years prophesied to him, yet left for salvation for the Jews. He said, Messiah, the Prince, which is Christ, will come and prophesy in the midst of that 70 years, or seven years, he'll be cut off. Jesus preached three and one half years and was cut off. Amen. And the daily sacrifice was taken away, which Daniel said. All right. And then... There was a space given then for the Gentiles and they come down to this age. Yeah. Then there's three and a half years left yet for the Jews. Amen. Now if we go to Revelation 11, we pick up exactly at the end. The church don't appear to the 19th chapter of Revelation, but at the end of that, Elijah and Moses returns again. Amen. And preach to the Jews. Two men anointed with that spirit. Or maybe them themselves. They never died, so they kill them in the land of the street called Sodom where our Lord was crucified, Jerusalem. And after three days, while the last spirit of life came into him, it went up, raised up. And then about a third of the earth was blown to pieces at that time. They'd done miracles and signs with the Jews. Now here's that Jews that they're coming to preach to. The worlds cannot, could not blow one another up or kill one another or destruction come until those Jews come back down on that place. Amen. Here sets the Bible saying so. Hallelujah. He saw the four angels. And what, what they got to receive? They got to receive the Holy Ghost. Amen. Just like they did. Amen. That man with the ink horn rider was the Holy Ghost. We realize that. Everybody reads the Bible. Well, so is this the same angel coming again with the Holy Ghost. Amen. The seal of the living God. Ephesians 4.30. The Holy Spirit of God. Amen. Sealed until the day of your redemption. Oh, and they Lord. cannot do nothing now until those Jews return and just a few weeks ago they class the whole thing together and become in the UN it's ready we're at the end everything's sealed up now now I watch to prove that they're Jews now I'm going to take the saying hurt not the earth neither the sea or any tree until we seal the servants of our God in their forehead now to prove that this revelation is right watch this the fourth verse and I heard the number of them were sealed and there were sealed 144,000 all of the tribes of the children of Israel. Amen. Israelites. Where are they at? They're just now gathered. <laughs> They're up there ready waiting for the sealing time to come. 
Of the tribe of Jude was sealed 12,000. Tribe of Reuben, 12,000. Tribe of Gad, 12,000. Asher, 12,000. Nephthim, 12,000. And on and on, Simeon, and on, uh, on down to Benjamin, the 12 tribes. And 12 times 12 is 144,000. See? Now that's the one. Now if you look in the 14th chapter, just a moment here, you see. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Sinai, and with him 144,000, having his father's name written in their forehead. Mount Sinai. The lamb had come back from the rapture and come back as we talked the other night. And Joseph dismissed all the Gentiles when he stood by his brother and said, I'm Joseph, your brother. Amen. And then they were scared. You remember in the church age there where we had it? When he would return back, even those who pierced his hands, and they'll say, where did you get those nail scars? He said, in the hands of my friends. And they lamented. And each family separated one from the other and wept and wept and wept because that they had did this evil. Their very Messiah, their very God. And he'll say to them, just exactly like he said to, to uh, Joseph said to uh, Israel, he said, don't be angry with yourself, for God did this to preserve life. And God, the Bible says that God blinded the eyes of the Jews that the Gentile might have a chance, we ourselves, to take our people for his namesake, his bride, out of the Gentile. Amen. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? There you are. There's your 140. Now, if you want to see the bride come up after that to show that the 144,000 is not the bride, just continue to read now on down from the 8th chapter on. Or, uh, yes, the 8th chapter. Uh, the 8th verse, I mean, from the 7th chapter. Let's start the 9th ninth, ninth verse because the 8th eight, verse is the ceiling of Benjamin 12,000. After, after this... I beheld in lo a great multitude which no man could number. Here comes the bride. Of all nations, kindreds, people, and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robe and palms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God which sat upon the throne and to the Lamb. All the angels stood around about the throne. And about the elders and the four beasts fell, uh, fell before the throne on their faces and worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessings, glory, wisdom, thanksgiving, honor, power might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. One of the elders which answered and said unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence cometh they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said unto me, These are they which have come up out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God and serve Him day and night in the temple. See? What does your wife do? She serves you in the house. You sit down. She gives you your food. She fixes the clothing. See? She serves you... Day and night in the house. See? And this one, these of all nations, the Gentiles, which is the bride, are before the throne of God with him day and night. Oh, remember what we said last night, talked on it? And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither shall they thirst any more. Neither shall the sun light, light on them or any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and lead them into living fountains of water and God shall wipe all tears from their eyes. Now there's your 144,000 Israel that's waiting for the coming of the Lord and cannot go in until first the Gentiles are finished. Amen. Got to be finished. Now I might say this a little personal or something. I trust that you'll understand it. When Louis Petrus of Stockholm, Sweden, the general overseer, the head of the Philadelphian churches, he sent down a million Bibles to these Jews. Little testaments. I've got one of them up there, a little souvenir from it. The Jew always reads in the back to the front, and so you know how their, their language is. And they would read these books, and they said, 
Well, if this Jesus is the Messiah and He's dead and His Spirit is back in the form of the Spirit, let us see Him do the sign of the prophet. Then we'll believe Him. What a perfect setup. I thought, Lord, here's the time now. Now is the time. Here it is. So on an airplane I go, Billy and I go and tuck off. I was going on up into India, and I said, now on my road back, I slip right over here, and I'll bring the message to the Jews and get them out there and say, is it true? The Jews always believe their prophets. We all know that. Because God told them that the Messiah would be a prophet. And they believe the prophets. And God said, if there be among you a man who is a prophet, a seer, and if he will deal with him in visions and so forth, and, and if what he says comes to pass, then you hear him. For I am with him. Amen. But if it don't come to pass, then don't have nothing to do with that prophet, because I, I, I ain't with him. But if it does come to pass, what he says, then you hear him, because I'm with him. And the Jews know that. Amen. And I thought, oh my, wouldn't it be wonderful? I'll just get me about four or five thousand of them and stand out there and let them, let them read that Bible and say, if this be the Messiah, let's see him do the sign of the prophet. I said, what a setup it'll be. Had my ticket in my hand. Just about 30 minutes before calling time on the uh, Arabian plane line. So I stand out there at Cairo, Egypt. And I thought, praise God. In two more hours, the Jews will receive the same thing as they did at Pentecost. Just as sure as anything. I thought, if I stand there and can tell them, go pick yourself out a bunch of men out there among you and bring them here. See if he's still Messiah. <laughs> and then I sit down up on the same grounds that your forefathers rejected this Messiah, you receive Him. Raise up your hands and he'll, you'll receive the Holy Ghost right now. And then they'll evangelize the world and they're part of the world when they, when they receive it. Get the leaders. Don't Just hit the main nerve center. The leaders. Let them start. And something struck me and said, Do not go now for the hour is not yet. The Gentiles isn't fulfilled yet. The day isn't finished. Oh, I thought that was just me. So I started again. It got so bad, I just couldn't stand it. And I went out behind the hangar and I bowed my head. I said, Father, is that you speaking to me? He said, Do not go to Israel now. The hour is not yet. I just went in, changed my ticket, routed it again, went the other way. Because the hour is not yet. But one of these days, the message will go to Israel. And while it will break far, God will send it to them, Moses and Elijah, and Revelations 11, and they'll do signs and wonders. Amen. And all the signs. While the Hallelujah. Gentiles is finished, the grace of day of grace will leave the Gentile church, the Pentecostal age will leave. The denominations will continue on because they come up here at the sleeping virgin. We'll go into that just in a moment. But they'll come up in that class. But then when they do, when they do that, the Jews will receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost and there'll be a revival there that'll stop the heavens in the days of the don't rain. They'll do all kinds of signs and miracles. And finally, the Roman hierarchy, the Jews has the wealth of the world and, and so the Roman uh, Catholic Church will break his agreement with the Jews after this thing is over and then there will, the treaty that they got signed between them, he'll go down there and that's when God will stand like he did in the, the old days there and fight for Israel. They'll finally kill these two prophets and they'll lay in the street and spit on them like they did these Pentecostal minister and his wife and children here a few weeks ago down there. And um, the little belly swelled up that big of the children where they walk by and spit on them and let out a hot sun for three or four days out bearing them. They'll do the same thing. The Bible said so. They'll do the same thing right there. And when they do that, after three days laying dead, the spirit of life will come into those two prophets and it'll rise up and ascend into glory. And about that time, the firework starts then. Amen. That's the end time. And that's when she's over. But before that happens, the Gentile elected bride... There'll be somebody sitting at a table one of these mornings. One will be taken and the other left. You'll find one, what's the matter? Be riding right along in a car talking to somebody. Wife or hubby sitting at the seat. They won't answer. They won't be there. You'll run to the graveyard. There'll be some graves open the other and still closed. For the rest of the dead live not for the space of a thousand years. Just remember, it, it's over then. It'll be a secret coming. No one will know what's going to happen. We're commanded to be ready and watching. We don't know what hour. But whatever it is will not prevent any of these back in here. For just as soon as Jesus appears, the whole watch rises. Dead or alive, doesn't matter. We don't, we don't meet Him first. We meet one another first. The Bible said, Ephesians 5th chapter, it said, For we which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord, down here, 
shall not prevent or hinder those which are asleep. That precious one is seal their blood, seal their testimony with their blood, not prevent or hinder those that are asleep. For the trumpet will sound, something will take place, the gospel something will sound. Hallelujah. The announcing of His coming. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Oh, oh, and we which are alive Amen. and remain shall be changed. Standing and feel a change come on. The gray hair go out. The wrinkles fall away. Be changed in a moment and a twinkling of an eye. And we shall meet our loved ones first. There's Mama, Papa, there's my buddy. Oh, hallelujah, we're ready. And then together with them that were dead, says the Scripture, we'll be caught up in the air to meet the Lord. The order of the coming. Oh, to see that old daddy of mine. Oh, my. See them, old loved ones, that's went down in the faith down there to meet them. See the sweetness of God knowing if we met Him first, we'd wonder, was Mama in it? Did, did Mama finally make it? We preached so hard. We, we tried. Was she here? Is Uncle Joe here? Is, is the brother here? Is so-and-so? See, Lord, we love you. We love you. But first, we're going to meet one another. <laughs> no wondering about it. We're all there. No wonder they stood and said, Amen, glory and wisdom and honor and power and might. The 24 elders took off their crowns and fell on the ground like that. All of them laid down on the ground and worshipped Him. One of these days we'll stand out beyond the earth, out of the ring of the earth, out out of somewhere in space. We won't be in heaven yet. We'll be caught up to meet Him in the air. When Rebecca decided, quick deciding that she would go with Eliezer upon the camel to meet Jacob or meet the Isaac which was her to-be husband she had never seen him know that God was leading her ja- Jacob's son uh, Isaac was on his way out into the field at the cool of the evening remember it was in the evening time Amen. and Rebecca riding on the camel Eliezer said there he comes down. And Rebecca jumped off the camel, pulled the veil from her face. She'd never seen him. Now that was her husband, but she'd never seen him. She's going to meet him by faith. I don't know what he looks like, but oh, when I see him. And there, when she seen him, he was love at the first sight. And he had never seen her, so he's seen her. Love at the first sight. And here they come to meet one another in the fields. And he tucked her into his father's of kingdom over here and married her. That's where the church will be caught up in the air. In the middle of the air and meet the Lord on His road down. Oh, what an affair it will be. Love at the first sight. And when we stand there upon the rings of this earth and sing them songs of redemption. Oh my how we'll sing and praise Him for our, the redeeming grace that He's given us. When angels will cover the sides of the, the circle of the earth with bowed heads, not knowing what we're talking about. Them angels was lost. They won't know what it means to be saved. We were the ones who was lost. Amen. We were the one who will understand now what a horrible thing laid ahead of us. And He redeemed us by His blood out of every kindred tongue and nation. Amen. What a day of rejoicing that will be. Oh, I like that song said, there's going to be a meeting in the air. In the sweet, sweet by and by. I'm going to meet you and greet you over there in that home beyond the sky. Such singing ever heard, ever heard by mortal ears. It'll be glorious, I do declare. When God's own Son, He'll be the leading one at that meeting in the air. Um, You heard a little Moses in the bulrush. You've heard of fearless David and his slain. You heard the story told of dreaming Joseph and of Daniel and the lions we often sing. Oh, but there's many, many others in the Bible. And I long to meet them all I do declare. (laughs) That's right. And what a joy it'll be when we meet them at that meeting in the air. Waiting for that day. There comes your 144,000. We'll receive the gospel after we can't receive it at the same time. The light is on the Gentiles. The Jews are denying it and hiding it. 
Now, when the Gentiles is taken up, then the Spirit comes up on two to give witness to them. Then the Jews receive it, which is 144,000 of the lost tribes of Israel will receive the gospel. And the bride is taken away. Now there's ten virgins. Let's strike Matthew 21 right away. See, we still got quite a little time. Oh, I love the Bible. When I take my vacation in heaven, what a wonderful trip that will be. You're in concerts by the heavenly chorus and the gates of my the face of my Savior I'll see setting down on the banks of the river <laughs> beneath the shade of the evergreen tree. <laughs> I want to spend my vacation in heaven. Won't you come take yours with me? <laughs> now, in uh, the book of of uh, St. Matthew, I believe, the uh, 25th chapter, I believe. I said 21, didn't I? I had it marked down here, 21, but that's wrong. It's 25. <laughs> I had to hurry this morning. I was got up tired and late, and, and I, I was hurrying. I was jotting down some scriptures, and I put 21 when it's, it's 25. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened to ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Now, and five of them were wise, and five were foolish. And they that were foolish took their lamps, and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, that's through these church ages, they slumbered and slept all the way down through, Bo all died, slumbered and slept, see, as they went down through. Now they're not lost. But they're just slumbered and slept. They're waiting. See, they didn't say they're dead, but they're slumbering and sleeping. See, And at midnight, there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. And all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said, said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be... Not enough for us and you, but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. Pardon me. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterwards came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. Now see, there wasn't unbelievers, it's good people. Open to us. But the answer, but he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour whence the Son of Man shall come. Now, the five wise virgins. Now, oil in the Bible symbolizes the Holy Spirit. We all know that. That's why we anoint the sick with oil, and oil symbolizes the Holy Spirit. So, uh, uh, the wise had oil in their lamps, which was the Holy Spirit, so they were ready to go in at the wedding supper. And we could go back in, uh, in, uh, in Ezekiel uh, uh, 9 and so forth and pull out and show, but i got about 15 more scriptures wrote out here. So, oil, I believe we've already had it in our class uh, this week. That oil is, symbolizes the Holy Spirit. We all know that. Amen. Now watch the... Both of them were virgins. Now, let me get this. Here, let's take these two right here. This is a virgin, and this is a virgin. This was a foolish virgin, and this was a wise virgin. But both of them are virgins. Now, if you'll take that name, virgin, and run it down, it means, it means holy, clean, sanctified. The word sanctify comes from the word sainted, which means clean. Like the Hebrew word, now that's a Greek word. Sanctify means clean. Now the Hebrew word is make holy. See? And ours is uh, clean. Now we take the three words. Like um, uh, each word has the same meaning, but it's spoke different. 
Like the, the word uh, clean, holy, sanctified. All three the same word. Like we're going to speak uh, the word like dog. I'd say dog, that's English. If I'd say uh, dog in German, Fred, is Hund. Is that right? Uh, Brother Norman, if I'd say dog in Spanish, it's Ajo. <laughs> Ajo, Hund, dogs all dog to us, see? See? It's, uh, it's just an expression. So the Greek word for clean is sanctify. The Hebrew word is holy. Holy, clean, and sanctify is all the same word. So this was not a filthy, dirty church. It was a sanctified, clean church. Ten virgins went out to meet the bridegroom. What does it mean? All these churches, not, now not down here in the Roman, but down into the denominationals, the Nicolaitans. Baptists preach on the second coming of Christ. Methodists preach the second coming of Christ. Amen. Presbyterian preach the second coming of Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Nazarenes preach the second coming of Christ. Yeah. Pilgrim Holiness preach the second coming of Christ. Is that right? Yeah. All of them went out to meet the bridegroom. Now you, you remember that they, everyone was on the road to meet the, the bridegroom. Now if God only respects that, then you have to take them too. But you remember the same thing how the parable the other night when God spoke up to us in the church age and said that Balaam, the doctrine of Balaam. Now here stood Balaam which was a fine, great big organized nation. And they were believers in God. Because look what Balak done when he come down. Balaam rather. He offered the very same sacrifice to the very same God that Israel had. Israel's God, Jehovah. And he made seven hours. Seven is God's complete number. Six days he labored and seventh he rested. It's, it's complete, see? Seven, six days he's labored in the world. First 2,000 years it was destroyed by water. Second 2,000 years Christ come and this is the third 2,000 now. At the end of every 2,000 something happens. The world is shook back again. Amen. And 6,000 years he built the world. 6,000 years the church labors against the world. And the 7,000 is that 1,000 years millennium reign. Amen. Understand it now? Amen. Now, the church has seven church ages. Also, God, that's the complete number of the church age. That's all. Seven. Seven is God's completed number. Seven church ages. Seven... A uh, thousand years of creation, everything deals in the seven. Now, there was the virgins went out to meet him and the foolish virgins. Now, did not have oil in their lane, but they had everything else. They were clean. They believed in Christ. They preached the word if they believed their denomination let them preach. They preached that, the second coming. The sacrifice, the atonement, they believe... You ever tied with a good Baptist scholar one time? You better know what you're talking about. Sure had. But you see, so close at Matthew 24, Matthew 24, 24, read it right away and you'll see. Jesus said that in this last days, the two spirits would be so close together to deceive the very elected if it was possible. Amen. It'll be so close, it'll swing that Pentecostal like nobody's business. Uh, no. Sure. Uh, Matthew 24, 24. Anybody have it? I didn't get it right there. You got it there, sister? Some of you? No. Matthew 24. Got it? Ben? All right, read it. False Christ. False prophets. There you are. Amen. Now, what will rise? There will rise false Christ. Yeah. False people saying, I am of Christ. Amen. False prophets saying, I am this and I am that. Amen. And they'll almost deceive the very elected if it was possible. 
And there's only one way that you can ever be saved. That's when you were chosen before the foundation of the world. That is the elected by foreknowledge. Your name was put on a book back there. Great sign. Now watch these two churches. If I could, if there's some way I could just make the people see it. This burns in my soul. This, these churches are just as clean and holy as this. And if they're all virgins, they're all virgins. Amen. Just as clean. The only difference was, was the oil in the Lamb. <laughs> the Holy Ghost. Amen. And the Holy Ghost, if it's in there, it produces the very same kind of fire it did on Pentecost. Amen. But they don't have no fire. Amen. No oil in the Lamb. <laughs> they have church ritual. Church just as ritualistic as it could be. Fine ceremonies, nothing against it. Creeds that will shake your conscience. And songs like angels sing. And uh, you put your finger on your other life, you couldn't do it. But still, that's wrong. It's not. It's it's part of it, but not all of it. That's the kind that misses the rapture. Okay? They're just now. Watch. Here was Moab come down. I'll take it right here so you can see it. Here is more of a great organization. I'll put it for organization. Here is Israel with no organization. Amen. Here is more put up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven altars. Israel had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven altars. All right. More of up here put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bullocks. Israel, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bullocks. Amen. All right, Lord said there will come a time when there will be a man Christ come on earth. So he'll be the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. We'll put seven what? lambs on this altar. Amen. Israel said that's exactly right. Seven lambs on the altar. Amen. See? Now, in the very beginning, Cain put an altar, made a sacrifice, worship, done everything that Abel done. Amen. Without... Oh, receive it. Without the revelation of God. Amen. Well, the whole church is built on that revelation. Amen. Jesus sets up on this rock, I'll build my church. Amen. Spiritual revealed oh, truth of the supreme deity Amen. of Jesus Christ. Amen. On this rock, I'll build my church. Now, if God only respects your rituals, your rites, as Methodists, Baptists, Pentecostals, and so forth, if He only expects that for you to do, Preach the second coming and all these other things that it's absolutely scriptural, like Baptist, Presbyterian, and so forth does, then God's obligated to take both of them. Amen. Because that's all He requires. But you see, without the revelation, there's the sleeping virgin, here's the wise virgin. Amen. <laughs> they was the organization of great nation. We read the other night where it said these people will not be an organization. There will be wanderers around in the land. <laughs> Dwelling in tents, poor, humble. But said, don't you try to curse them, because I'm with them. Amen. Now watch. These people believe in the same ritual that they believe in and worship the same God. Amen. See? But they didn't have signs and wonders following them. Amen. Israel had a brass serpent, a smitten rock, the joy of the king, divine healing, Amen. prophets, Everything right down here, and they did not. They had the ritual, but up without the blessing. Amen. The oil. Oh, the same thing with the sleeping virgin and the wise virgin. They were both sanctified people. Amen. But this one had oil, and this one did not have oil. Amen. So they said, We're as good as you are. That's <laughs> none of us good as far as that concerned. Why, well, you're a bunch of holy rollers? Well, okay. Uh, it's all right. There's none of us good. We all sin and come short of glory, God. But the only way you'll ever know it, not by joining church, not by trying to live good, but by receiving Christ. Amen. It ain't what I live, it's what He was. Amen. It ain't what I am, it's what He is. Amen. He become me that I might through His grace become Him, Amen. the Son of God. Amen. You see it? Amen. Now, a sleeping virgin and a wise virgin with oil in her lane. Now, all of a sudden there came a sound, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. And they wakened. But when they did, this one could go in. Because it had oil in the lamp. That was the difference. This one could not go in where there was no oil in the lamp. <laughs> they went back to pray up to receive the Holy Ghost. But while they were gone, it was all over. The denomination said, well, maybe we've been wrong. Maybe we better go back, seek for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. 
That's what they're trying to do now. Did you notice that? Yes, the Presbyterians. Hold your tape a minute. <clears throat> I don't recall this name. Uh, the bridegroom come! Yeah. And how close does this come in then? Yeah. When they're going now to try to buy! Yeah. Alright, turn your tape on, Gene. <coughs> now you get it? Amen. While they went to buy, they're trying to buy now. All the churches try to have a revival. Revival is trying to go back. Now even to Dr. Billy Graham wrote in the Herald of Faith, you see it, uh, from Chicago, and said that we cannot disregard the Pentecostal move. See? We cannot regard them because they have more converts in a year's time than all the other churches put together. That's exactly that fire burning, shaking it, calling, throwing a net in it, pulling. When you throw a net, Jesus said the kingdom of God like a man went and threw a net into a sea. And when he pulled, he had turtles, snakes, frogs, serpents, everything else. But he had some fish too. That's what the Pentecostal message is doing. It's sweeping the air. So when you're in a pool, we're getting turtles, crawfish, crawdads, tadpoles, water dogs, hell divers, and everything else in there. But what it is, there's some fish in there too. That's the ones that's the masters. All right, to some of you legally breathing brethren on this tape, <laughs> like to burn it. When did it become fish? When the net went over them? They were fish in the beginning. <laughs> Elected from the foundation of the world. Yeah. I just never come into the master's use. Amen. That's your frog. You take an old frog, throw him up on the bank, just squap, squap, right back to the water. No the crawfish sat there and say, Huh? That's a bunch of holy rollers. Here he goes back. <laughs> right back to the mud as hard as he can go. That's right. The old snake will hiss along a little bit. I believe the days of miracles has passed. Doctor so and so and so and so told me so. Uh, you can't fool me. There she goes. I don't hear you, you see. Snake to begin with. Frog to begin with. Paul said in the Bible, them kind, he said, they went out from us because they wasn't of us. Amen. All right. The foolish virgin, the wise virgin with oil in her lamp. She made ready. Now, while she was gone to get some oil, that's what they're trying to do right now. These great evangelical churches trying to find uh, these great things. You know, do uh, uh, go back to the Bible, back when you need the Pentecostal blessing. Well, you can imagine what kind of a service they're going to have, see? They ain't going to get down there and spoil all that manicure on them. And, oh, no, oh, no. They ain't going to give up them sororities and societies and things like that. Holding on to the world like Esau. On one hand, try to catch God with the other. You can't do it. You can't be a cross-eyed Christian, you know, looking at God in the world too. You've got to center yourself in Calvary. Stay right there with that. Now, but there they go. And they're trying to go back and remember how close we are the very time that they went to buy. That's when the bridegroom comes. Oh, Brother Stricker, we're near there. We're putting her home. Oh, one of these mornings, a trumpet of the Lord shall sound, and time shall be no more. The morning breaks eternal, bright and fair. When he is saved on earth, shall gather to their home beyond the sky. What a time that'll be. Yeah, the sleeping virgin. Well, uh, this sleeping virgin now, you want to know what will become of her. Is that the one thing I want to explain? What will happen to these churches? What will happen to these people who come part of the way with Christ and didn't come or did not go all the way with Christ? Now, in Romans, I believe, 2.22, the Bible said, Paul said, If the Spirit of God is not in you, you are none of God's. You're going to the organization, but not to God. Amen. If the Spirit of God isn't in you, you are not of God. Amen. You have to have the Spirit of God to be of God, certainly. All right, sir. The Great Tribulation. Now, now, if you, they'll have to go through. Now, you remember he said, now let me get the rest of that. They were cast into outer darkness and there'd be weeping, wailing, and gnashing of teeth. All right, that's a great tribulation, isn't it? 
the great tribulation. Now, after this tribulation, those people... Now, let me uh, catch it again here. It is the remnant. Now, look. <coughs> here is a piece of goods. All right, the lady lays it out like this. Now she's going to make herself a, uh, something, you know, some kind of a garment. Now this is all of the, uh, all the goods she's got. Now every bit of it is the same kind of goods. Is that right? Amen. Both of them were virgins. See? All right. They had faith in Christ, form of godliness, went to church, done good things, charity. Nothing could be said against your works and things. I know thy works, he said, in every age. I know thou works, but yet thou likest. See? Now, when the woman, she makes up in her mind which way she has a pattern here. And she makes up in her mind which way she is going to cut this pattern, what's going to be cut from. Is that right? Well, she gets what she thinks is the sufficient and best part of the, of the pattern. Is that right? Because it's all the same goods. But she lays it like this, maybe, or like that. She lays it down. Then she takes her scissors and she cuts it out. Now, what's left over is called... Remnant. All right. Now, what is this pattern? How is it known? By the one, the place that the lady elected Amen. to cut it from. Amen. God, before the foundation of the world, who knew the end from the beginning, by foreknowledge, He elected where to cut. Amen. He knew the difference between Esau and Jacob. He knows the difference between sinner and saint. He knows the difference. He knows the motive of every heart. So He elected us before the foundation of the world and put our names on the Lamb's book of life and also the Lamb that was to be slain and put our names on before He was slain. And the Bible said that Christ was the Lamb slain before the foundation of the world. Amen. Well, our names were put on the book when he, when he was elected back there to be the Lamb to be slain. We were elected to be the one that he was slain for. Amen. See it? Amen. Now, it's all virgin. Now, here's the little ring. Not throw it away. Oh, no. She keeps it. She lays it back. She can use it for something else. See? <clears throat> but it's not going to be used there. That's the church cut out. Now, they'll have to stand the judgment because they go through the tribulation. That is the remnant. Now, you get it? Here goes the church home. It goes home. Here is the remnant that's left over. And here is the 144,000 on Mount Sinai of the Jews. Amen. It's not three different brides. Amen. It's the bride, the remnant, and the 144,000. Exactly. He wasn't eating nothing but Holy Ghost food out there, I suppose. So he was all right. But nothing wrong with John. See, and there, there they are. Now, at the end of the time, how many knows that the Bible says that the saints shall judge the earth? Amen. Paul says so. Let's turn now to, to the book of Daniel and get the white throne. We can get out of Revelations, but I like to take out Daniel, same thing, Daniel 7. And uh, we'll uh, catch the, the great white throne judgment here. Let's begin at the 8th verse of the 7th chapter of Daniel. <clears throat> and I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them a little horn, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. Now, we know we're in Rome there. Now. And behold, in this horn were eyes of a man. Now remember, this horn did not receive a crown. It was a cunning thing. The other horns turned to beasts. This was a cunning, it was a man. Pope instead of pagan, you see. And a mouth speaking great things. Now watch, night first. I beheld until the thrones were cast down. That's all the Gentile kingdoms over. This prophet speaking. Now remember, every one of those things he said has happened right down to this last thing. We know that by our history that we're taking. Who was cast down, and the ancient of days did set, whose garments was white as snow. You know who that was the other night in our vision? Jesus. And the hair of his head was like pure wool, and his throne was like a, uh, a fiery flame. 
and his wheels as burning fire. And a fire stream issued and came forth from uh, before him. Thousands times thousands ministered unto him. There's the church coming back with him. See? And tens of thousands times tens of thousands stood before him. That's the bride coming up the rest of the world. And judgment was set and the books were opened. The judgment was set and the books were opened and I beheld them because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake. And I beheld even until the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given unto the burning fires. And concerning the rest of the dead, they that had their dominion taken a and the rest of the beast, I mean, had their dominion taken away from them, and yet their lives were prolonged for a season and time. Now, the judgment was set, and the books were open. That's when the bride comes back and sets the judgment, and the elected church, the church that's been taken up, will return after those three and a half years and after the time. And over in Revelation, it gives it, said, that, uh, that uh, the rest of the dead live not again for a thousand years. You, how many's read it? Many, many times. Live not for a thousand years. Jesus returns with the bride. With the bride. Now remember, as I said, everything's in a tree. His coming is in a tree. The first time He came to redeem His bride. The second time He comes... To catch away his bride like a love affair. Comes around, steals her out at night time, takes her away from the world. Meet him in the air. The secret coming of the Lord. See? The second time he come is to receive his bride. First time, to redeem her. Second time, to receive her. And the third time, with her. King and queen. And here he comes back for the judgment upon the nation. Paul said, dare any of you all go to court. It has a matter against one another. Can't take care of these little things, knowing not that the saints shall judge the earth. Amen. Here's the judgment that's been given over to Christ and His... They're the attorneys in the box. There He sits at the throne. Here's the bride, the attorney. And here comes these up. The books were open. Another book was the book of life. The first book was the book of the sinner. That was cast away. All right. He said, then to begin with, there's the, there's the goats. He don't even have a chance. <laughs> See? He's a sinner to begin with. Alright? Now he's cast away. And to the sheep, they stood the judgment. They had to be judged. And the saints had to judge them. Amen. God is not unjust. If a heathen is in the land, and we're building eight and ten million dollar gold shrines here in America, instead of taking the message to them over there, God's going to hold us responsible, but spare them. Amen. Sure. God is not unjust. You, you hear, if you've never seen this before, you, you may not be held responsible, but you're responsible now. Amen. See? You're all responsible, and we're responsible for taking the message. Amen. You're responsible whether you hear it or not. Amen. Now, the heathens arise, and people who's out there worshiping a shrine, they don't know no better. They don't know nothing about it. God's not unjust. He would not condemn them unless it had a chance. And they will be allotted a place. And so in the church, that each age down to this church age, from, from Ephesus on down to down here, the message, the true message of Christ, like it was at the beginning, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, the power, the resurrection, speaking with tongues, interpretation of tongues, gifts of healing, baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus, all those things that He taught. Each one that's in that bride will stand as an attorney. Amen. Here comes somebody's case up. You had a meeting at so-and-so, did you tell him? Now the attorney, yes, I told him. There it is on the book, you can't deny it. Even our thoughts are on that. Amen. You can't deny. Yes, I told him that he must be baptized in Jeffersonville there in the tabernacle. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, you, yeah, here it is on the book. You told them that they must do it. They he even searched the scripture and found out it was right, but didn't do it. Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I didn't even know you. 
see? That's where he separates the goats from the sheep, you see. Cast some on the right side and some on the left side. That brings your three classes back again. But this class will never be with that class. That's the bride. And you notice, the bride is with him in the temple. The others labor and bring their glory into the kingdom. But the bride is with the bridegroom continually. The others will never be lauded. Like these down here. They'll serve. They'll not be cast away because he separated them as sheep from goats. But, he, but the goat had no understanding of it. He didn't care about it. He was a goat and satisfied as a goat and so he just died as a goat and that was the end of it. That was all. See? But the sheep... If he if God hold that stand over the heathen that never heard a thing. So if you preach this gospel to the people, and I have to stand, don't you remember in the great translation that he gave me not long ago? Amen. That I have to stand there with those people and, and I'd be responsible for them? Amen. And I seen those millions standing there, I said, Are they all brand? I said, No. I said they're your converts. And I said, I, I said, I want to see Jesus. He said, Not yet. It'll be a time before He comes yet. But He'll come to you first. And you'll be judged by the Word that you preach. And they're arresting <coughs> upon that. I said, well, all has to be done that. Will Paul have to stand? He said, yes, Paul stands too with his group that he preached to. I said, I'll preach the same message he did. And them millions raised their hands and said, we are resting on that. Amen. There you are. See, right there. Yes. So then together we'll go back to the earth for a, a body that can eat and we drink and live together through all the Christmas ages. There. That's the coming of the Lord. All right. Now, just a minute. Now, it's a, getting a little close now because it's getting almost on to our brother's time here for the baptism service or whatever he's going to use. All right. Now, during this church age, oh, here's something so beautiful. I like this so well. During these church ages, there is two spirits working almost alike. Right down to here. One is the denomination, the other is the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. And Jesus said they were so close that they would deceive their very elected if it was possible. These two spirits are marking their people for future judgment. Satan promised that he, is, that he would have more than Christ, and he has. Now, watch this real, real close now as we get through this. More than it would be, marking the people, many are like Eve. Eve just stopped long enough to be deceived. Amen. If she had to stop, there'd never been no deceiving. But Eve stopped. And when she stopped, that's where she got her deceiving. Instead of pressing on and... Do you, do you follow me close now? Yeah. Listen. The reason that Eve was deceived. Let's say it together so I'll be sure you got it. The reason Eve was deceived, she never kept the full Word of God. Yeah. Satan quoted it to her but he never told her all the truth Amen. neither does his denomination Amen. but she stayed long enough to get part of the word and didn't take all the word Amen. and that's what's the matter today Amen. the sleeping virgin stayed long enough to get part of the word but not all of the word Amen. the deceived church stays long enough to get part of the word but not all the word and they were sincere and honest about it Amen. Eve was deceived the Bible said she was deceived Amen. Adam was not deceived Amen. Adam wrote exactly he was doing wrong but his wife doing the things that she was doing persuading him to, to partake of the forbidden while he was a man see and it, it uh, so to him that he you understand see he knew he was doing wrong but he thought she was doing right amen oh don't you see that's why Paul said a woman should never preach the gospel amen, amen. she was she was in the she was the one that was deceived 
I suffer not a woman to teach or to usurp any authority, Amen. but to be in silence. See? So, for Adam was first formed, and then Eve, and Adam was not deceived, but the woman was deceived in being a transgression. So, notwithstanding now, she's not lost, she shall be saved in childbearing, if she's got a husband, and so forth. She continues on, faith and sobriety, and all holiness and such, she'll be saved. But never permit one to teach or to usurp authority. See? Paul said, don't you do it. He said, I think I have the mind of the Lord, he said. They said, why, uh, why the prophets over there prophesied and told us that we should preach. He said, what? Came the word of God out of you and came it from you only? If any man thinks himself to be a spiritual or prophet, let him acknowledge what I say is the commandments of the Lord. Amen. That's right. You know what he was talking about. But said, if he be ignorant, just let him be ignorant. That's all. If he won't listen to it, but just let him go his head right straight down to the gully. See? So just go ahead. But there, them two spirits, reason, like they got women on the police forces, yeah. out on the streets, that's a disgrace to the American flag yeah. to put them mothers out there on the street. And tens of thousands of men without a job. Yeah. Why, it's a woman's nation. Yeah. It's a woman's place. A woman will take over. It's woman worship. It's that Catholic dogmatic spirit worshiping a woman for God. Amen. Here's that just, it's just setting right. Don't you see the setup? Amen. There's nothing that God could have given a man any sweeter than a wife. A real wife. But when she gets anything beyond that, she's, she's out. Exactly. God never intend women to work in these places and do them kind of things like that. And women, they have children and raise their children. They're all little preachers, every one of them. But they have their own pastoral at home with their kids, bring up their children. All right. Now, two spirits are most alike, just like Eve. Almost. <laughs> Uh, well, Satan said, God has said, mm-hmm. God has said, mm-hmm. that's right, God has said, uh-huh. God has said, but, oh, surely he wouldn't condemn us if we were baptized in the name of Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Wouldn't that be just as well? Yeah. You slimy hypocrite. Yeah. God never said that. There's no such a thing anyhow. It's dead. Yeah. There is no such a name. Tell me where the name of Father, Son, Holy Ghost is. There's no such a name. Amen. Then it's dead. Why did it come out and start us, the dead church? Amen. No such a thing. you got a name that you're living. You say you're a Christian church, but you're dead. Amen. Amen. That's right. There's no such a thing as the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Oh, well, won't that be just as good? It won't. Paul said it wouldn't. Amen. said, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? We don't know where it be. He said, how is you baptized? The come and be baptized over again in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. That if an angel comes from heaven and teaches anything else, they ain't be cursed. Yeah. Yeah. That's the truth. I'm only responsible for saying it. <laughs> you understand it's not used so much as these tapes that I'm bawling out at. Because I know where they're going everywhere. And so that's what it is. All right. It's not. Eve was deceived. She stuck part of the word. More it was deceived. The sleeping virgin was deceived. Amen. The church is deceived. Amen. The denominations are deceived. Amen. See? Stay with the Word. Amen. That's the only way. Stay right with it. Don't move from any of it. Stay right with it. Go right on what God said do. Amen. No matter what anybody else says, keep God's line. Amen. Now, the sleeping virgin, she lost her place. We know that. <laughs> she comes up in the judgment, and if she's ever heard the truth, she's condemned. That's right. You'll never find Jesus any place but where you leave him at. Amen. Judas could come up. Remember, the sleeping virgins you say could be inspired by the devil. Absolutely. Still living clean? Yes, sir. Judas did. Amen. Saved, sanctified, preached divine healing, cast out devils. Why, just right straight up, almost the same thing that the rest of them was. But when it comes to Pentecost, Amen. that's where he showed his colors. Amen. He did not receive the Holy Ghost and turned his heels up and denied the Lord Jesus. That's exactly what the churches did. When it comes to the Pentecostal blessing, they got away from it. Oh, don't you see it, class? Oh, now tonight the great capstone. But just a moment, I think we've got a little bit more time here. I'd like to get to some other thing. I want to sh- you to... The mark of the beast. The mark of the beast. Let's take Revelation 13 just a minute. Revelation 13, 15. And just read what, the, what he's going to do. 
<laughs> Revelation 13, 15. And he had power to give life unto the image. Now that is unto the Protestant uh, uh, churches. The Protestant churches. He had power because they made an image. The Protestant churches through the, the uh, Council of Churches as making a place where that all Protestant fellowship will have to be united. How many knows or read of the great united building they got for the churches of the world? Sure. <laughs> up, in, up there now. It's like the UN nations. And all of them are there, every one of them, even to the assemblies of God. Oh, my God. They're there. They're there. Yeah. Dog eat dog as a hog goes to its water and a dog to its vomit. Right back to the same thing. Absolutely almost a nine their evangelical stand. And there you are. Want to be big. Want to act like the rest of the world like Israel did when they seen the kings and said, make us a king. Amen. And he made an image unto the beast. And the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast. The image of the beast. The Protestant denomination. Not the Catholic. This is America he's speaking of here. See, because this 13th chapter is on the American, the beast that come up out of the... See, all the other beasts come up out of water, which means thickness and multitudes of people. But the beast here, it come up like a lamb out of the ground where there was no people. Had two horns. And then it spoke like a dragon. And they made an image of the beast that was in Europe and made this over here an image to it, a cons uh, uniting the churches together and making this Protestant fellowship and then they forced all the other churches that they couldn't even buy or sell or anything else without they got this image of the beast. Now watch what takes place here. And he caused all, both great, rich, poor, free, bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead and that no man might buy or sell and he had the mark of the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that has understanding count the numbers of the beast for his number of a man. And his number is 603 score and 6. Which, you know, who that is. It's a hierarchy of Rome. Pope. Been right there. Seen it myself. But no. Up over his uh, place, his throne as it was. Like they set the first Boniface up. The third. Up at the beginning of the Catholic age here. And up over there is Vicarius Affiliadilia, which means a biker of the Son of God. Delia, Diddy, Deity. See. See, the biker of the Son of God. In other words, just like the Son of God sitting here on earth. And all powers to change the Bible, change anything he wants to. Therefore, say, Hail Mary. What does the Pope say? We'll have Hail Mary, etc. <laughs> well, uh, we'll do so and so. What the Pope says, that's it. That's it. A biker instead of the Son of God. Just recently had that dogma out that Mary was not buried and they got her grave and everything marked where she's buried. So no, she rose again and resurrected. The Pope said, that's it. That's it. That's infallible. See, the Pope said so. The biker of the Son of God. And said, now, anybody who wants to know who the beast is, where this power comes from, it said, count the numbers and let them that has wisdom. That's one of the gifts of the Holy Ghost is wisdom. And he that has wisdom, count the numbers, man... For it, count the numbers of the beast for it's the number of men and his number is 666 now uh, you take the uh, uh, and spell that name out V-I-C-O and, and just according to the words and draw a line out here and, and, and write up the Roman numerals and you'll find here you got 666 Amen. 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 Okay. and now let's make an image unto that beast and over in this country they made an image a confederation of denominations together the Nicolaitans getting together and denominated themselves and finally will unite as brotherhood not communist Catholics but they'll be united as a brotherhood to try to stamp out communism Amen. and the Bible said that God raised up communism to get revenge upon the nations for what they've done to the children of God Amen. exactly right he said, and they, they, they gave their power and everything to the beast for one hour and to revenge the people of the blood that they had shed. And when that atomic bomb or whatever it is will strike that Vatican City and the Roman hierarchy will be no more, it said, and in her was found the blood of every martyr Amen. that ever was killed in the world. Amen. Amen. And here's the image to it, a confederation of churches. Won't be long till we'll have to close them doors out, you know, and try to either take a denominational mark 
and we'll close the door. <laughs> That's right. We'll, we know better now. Now, now I want just for the squeezing down part before we leave the next few minutes. Now, the seal of God is the Holy Spirit. All know that, don't you? Amen. All right, we all know that. That the seal of God is the Holy Spirit. Now, that's found. You take a Revelation 9, 9 uh, 1 to 4, you find they all had the seal in their forehead. 1 Corinthians uh, 1, 22, uh, Paul said, Whereby he has sealed us by his Holy Spirit until the day. Ephesians 4, 30 says, Grieve not the Holy Spirit. That's that angel that come forth sealing. Uh, on their forehead. Now that doesn't mean you, he takes and puts a spot up there. Your forehead is your revelation. Amen. See? And your hand is the thing you do about it. Amen. See? It's a spiritual mark. Amen. Yeah. You don't take a big stamp and stamp you like that. Oh, no. Like here a few years ago, they said when the NRA come out, it was this, that. Don't look for that. It's already. The Bible said it began plumb back there. It's about run out now. Amen. See? Amen. That's right. But he marked the seal. See, now, how was, the, how was the first seal? What did it look like? They were filled with the Holy Ghost. That's right. And their works was the works of Christ. They laid hands on the sick. They recovered. They'd done all kinds of signs and miracles and wonder. And in their forehead was sealed by the revelation that He was the Son of God. And they were, they were working with Him at the deity of Christ. There's the mark. You say, well, now, He's the third person or the second person. Uh, you ain't got no seal yet. So just, just leave him alone. Amen. You've done, out, done off the paper there. <laughs> so then, there's no such a thing as that in the Bible. We, bless, we believe in the Holy Trinity. Uh, you're, away, you're not even around the paper now. Because <laughs> there's no such thing as Trinity ever mentioned in the Bible. Find the word Trinity in the Bible. Come lived in the Son, called the Sonship. Now He's in you, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, the same God. The Holy Ghost was the Father of Jesus Christ. Amen. A little while, the world won't see me anymore, said Jesus. I come from God and I go back to God, the Holy Spirit again. And I'll be with you, even in you, to the end at the consummation. Amen. All the way down, I'll be right on through you, right like that. Amen. And the very works that I do shall you do also. Amen. The things that I've been doing will be right along. That'll be the sign of the believer all the way. Go and preach and baptize them in the name of the Lord Jesus. And they'll be filled with my spirit. If they are, these signs will follow them that believe to the end of the world. I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. Praise He's received up in the glory. That's it. And we're expecting Him to come someday. Now, that's the seal of God. We know that. And uh, remember, there's only 144,000 of the Jews sealed, which was a remnant of the Jews left over. But in this, in the Gentile bride, the Gentile bride, there was tens of thousands, times thousands of those uh, sealed in there. Because that's the martyrs and things that come down through the ages there. They'll rise in the day of the judgment. What do you think will happen when that brassy judgment feet stands there that day? And then martyrs stand up there before them Romans, perhaps Nicolaitans back there, that had them burnt to stakes and throwed to lion's dens and things like that. And they stand there as the attorney in the, ju in the jury box here and the judge sitting there on the seat. Did you preach the gospel to him? I seal my life away under in a lion's mouth for it. Boom, brother. Talk about depart from me. Hell will be too good for them. That's exactly right. Hold fast. I know them which call themselves Nicolaitans and call themselves spirit filled, and they're not. Okay, there you are. Oh, what an hour is coming. What a dreadful time. God will revenge. I will revenge, saith the Lord. I will recompense. And every evil deed will see a just. Everything that you ever done or thought in your life will be held against you. They're on that great magnetic thing, whatever evil thought that passed through your mind. Repent, children. There's only one way to get away from it. Come into Christ. Amen. Amen. And when you go into his lovely five wounded side there, the five precious wounds in his body, when you see that bleeding out there and hide in that say rock of ages, I am no good. Hide me over rock of ages. Oh. Feel the precious Holy Spirit just die out and sail into the body of Christ. Rise to wake to new things. It's a new world around you. The sins that you once loved behind you. Oh, there's nothing future, nothing present, death, nothing else will ever separate you from that church. Sealed until the day of your redemption by the Holy Spirit. You got the revelation of who He is. 
You know in your heart you pass from death unto life. Watch your works with your hands, and you see. You no more steal, you no more do evil. Your hands are clean from all blood. You stand, preach the gospel, say what's right and live what's right and do what's right and the Holy Spirit with you, showing signs and wonders every day. God letting you know how you're my blessed child and I'm with you. I'm right with you. No matter where you're at, I'm with you. I'll go with you through the dark hours and everywhere. Oh, what a what an anchor. I've anchored my soul in the haven of rest, the sail the wild seas no more. Oh, the tempest may sweep o'er the wild stormy deep, but in Jesus I'm safe evermore. Even death comes singing up around some of these days and flying like a bee around your head like that. You can say, oh, death, where is your stinger? A little Sarah wrote the other morning. My little girl sitting back there. She was taking notes, her and Brother Collins, little girl, leave on what I was going to say. So I was reading the paper, Mother and I, and she said, The Book of Revolutions. <laughs> she said, and you know the little story I told at the end about death, you know? You were having no stinger. Was you here then? When I was told. See, uh, death once had a stinger in it. But when Satan wasn't too sure whether that man was the Son of God or not, he had seen him stand there when Satan comes to him and said, Well, uh, if you can perform miracles... If you're a miracle working fellow, you're that son of God. I tell you, it's written in the Bible, see. Uh, but, um, and if, if you are, let me see you perform a miracle. Now you're hungry, have me for 40 days. Won't you take a stone and make bread out of it and sit down and eat? Let me see you do it. I believe you're the son of God. The man shall not live by bread alone. By every word. Oh, my. He knew he didn't meet Moses there, didn't he? Moses took down the commandments and broke them. But he knew he had more than Moses. Then he took him up and he said, See all the kingdoms of the world? There's the United States, there's Great Britain, there's all of them coming up here in years to come. He said, They'll ever one belong to me. You know that. Amen. That's who rules them. Amen. said, They're mine and I'll do with them. I'll send them to war. I'll do anything I want to with them. They're mine. He said, I'll give them to you if you'll just worship me. He said, Get behind me, Satan. Amen. He knew he was going to fall heir to him anyhow in the end. So he said, Get thee behind me, Satan. Finally, when they got him down there one day and they took a rag and put it around his face like this. I imagine an old dirty scarf and got pulled around his head and sitting there bleeding and hurt. Morning, cold wind blowing. They already whipped him. Blood running over his shoulders and throwed something around him like that and that blood sticking to his back and sitting there in a crown of thorns pulled down over his face like that and blood and spit from the soldiers all over his face sitting there. Wasn't that an awful looking sight? Oh, God. You say, well, if I'd have been there, I'd done something about it. Well, won't you do something about it now? Amen. 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 You've done the same thing. You do now. There he was sitting there, mocked and spit on. There his disciples standing back saying, oh my, could it have been? That man who could call a dead man out of the grave and look at him there, but he failed to know the Scriptures. Amen. That's what it is, see? And so, blood and spit on his face. They put a rag around his eyes and said, You know, they tell me he had spiritual discernment, you know. He's a prophet. He could tell the people. He told the woman at the well of her sins. And he told Simon that his father's name was Jonas and all about that. Let's see if he can, what he can do now. They said, We'll give him a little try. That's the devil working in them people. They put the rag over his eyes like that. They got a stick and hit him on top of the head with it. said, If you're a prophet, tell us who hits you. He never even opened his mouth. He just sat there. Satan said, you know, that can't be, that, that can't be God. <laughs> That's the same thing that old denomination says, they, that bunch of holy rollers, that can't be God, but they don't know. Amen. 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 That can't be God doing them things. That's mental telepathy. Uh, they're fortune tellers. <laughs> they just didn't get it, that's all. So he started, started up the hill. Put that robe around him. The only clothes he ever had, I guess, uh, when he's a man, Mary and Martha, uh, fixed him a little robe, robe throughout that scene, they put it over his back. There's them little spots on his coat as he went up the hill, dragging, bumping that old cross and his little frail body, going along them, whipping him and everything else, getting him to go on like that. That old cross bumping, he bumping, his shoulders rubbing, he staggering, he go on. Them little spots got bigger and bigger, that's why they all come to one big spot. Old Satan come up, you know, in the form of a bee. That death, you know, said, ah, that, God wouldn't do that. So he's just a man he's putting on. He still thinks that. <laughs> He's just putting on. So I'll just sting him. If he was God, he couldn't die. So I'll sting him and see about it. Like that. I'll give him a try. 
So when he got him on the cross, he stopped that stinger in him. But when he did, he lost his stinger. <laughs> that was more than a man. He stung God that time. And that's when he said, Oh, death upon Paul. You, you know, a bee, after it once stings deep, it can't sting no more. Bees finished saying he can buzz and make a noise, but he, he can't sting because he ain't got no stinger. So death don't have any stinger anymore. Paul, when he's building a place to chop his head off, Death was staying buzzing around him. He said, Oh, death, where is your sting? Amen. The grave said, I'll get you, Paul. I'm going to war you. I went there where they chopped his head off and threw him over the sewer there. The grave said, I- I- I'll canker your body. I'll rot you away. And he said, Oh, oh grave, where is your victory? <laughs> but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Death lost its sting for him. That I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I've kept the faith. And henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness that the Lord the righteous judge will give me at that day. And not only me, but all those who love His appearing. Amen. Amen. Chop now if you want to. <laughs> oh, that's, that's it. That's the way, but that's, that's the real Christian spirit. Now, now, if you receive the opportunity, how do you get the mark of the beast? I'd just like to say this just because I thought I'd close in saying this. How do you get the mark of the beast? Would you like to know? Yeah. What is the result? What is the mark of the beast? We know what the seal of God is. What is the seal of God? Or, let's just turn over Ephesians 4.30 and then, then you get it, then you read it yourself there. Or, or either some of you can get uh, Revelations, uh, Revelations 9, 1-4 and uh, uh, 2 Corinthians 1.22. There's many places. I marked off a few there. But let's get Ephesians 4.30 and then you can see what the seal of God is and these others or anywhere you just take the word seal in your concordance and run there where you want to. All right. Ephesians 4 and 30. Listen to this. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed until the day of your redemption. What is the seal of God? All right. Now, he that has not the Spirit of God, none of mine. If you have the Holy Spirit, you're part of God because you're His. He's, he's sealed you and He's in you, working in you. The signs that He does, you do also. Now, does everybody understand that, you class? It takes the Holy Spirit to be God. Holy Spirit. And if you are of the Holy Spirit, you do the works that Jesus did. See? Your love. When them spit in your face and beat you around like that, there was no root of bitterness. He looked down at him. He said, Father, forgive them. Or they don't know what they're doing. <laughs> they did. Could you imagine that? His own children crying out for his blood. <coughs> the creator of heavens and earth hanging on a cross that he made himself. Wrote it out of the ground. Amen. And his own children. Think of your children, fathers. Your own children crying out for him. Away with him. Give us Barabbas the thief out yonder. Oh, I was that Barabbas. I was the one that deserved to die and he took my place. How old Brabus must have feel that morning when the trumpet of this centurion coming down through there and opened up the door and old Brabus said, Oh my, just a little bit and I'll be gone. I'm a murderer. I'm a thief. They're going to kill me today. I know they are. It's the day of the Passover so I, I really, I know I'm going to die today. Nervous all night walking around just like any other sinner. First thing you go, here comes the guard. He said, Oh, oh here it is. I got to go. I got to go. And the key went in. Clicked, the guard stood at it and said, Come on, Brabus! Yes, I know I'm going, I'm going. No, go on and do what you want to. What? Go do what you want to. Go on out, you're free. I'm free? Well, you sentenced me to death. That's right. God sentenced all sinners to death. You sentenced me to death. How do I go free? Come here, Brabus. Look on up the hill now. This is that cross bumping on the ground. Here are the nails when they're drove into his hands. Look at him crying there. Salty tears and blood mixed to his face. Yes, amen. He took your place, Brabus. He died for you. Amen. You mean he died that I could be free? Yes. yes. Well, all right, I'll start murdering again. <laughs> oh, what an ungrateful. You deserve to die. Yes. When, you, when I survey the wondrous cross where on the Prince of Glory died, all my fame is but vain loss. Oh, my. No wonder the poet said, Living he loved me, dying he saved me. Buried he carried my sins far away. Rising he justified freely forever. 
Someday He's coming, O oh, glorious day. How could I ever turn Him down when I see what He done for me? How would I not be willing to lose every friend I got on earth? How would I not be ready to be kicked out by organizations, kicked about with everything else? When I look at honor, when I was condemned to death and He took my place. Sure, Lord. Everything, I count everything else vain lost. Oh, let me embrace the cross, O oh Lord. Mid-rendering rocks and darkening skies, my Savior bowed His head and died. The opening veil revealed the way that heaven's joy is in this day. Oh, let me, let me stay close to Thee, Jesus. Amen. Don't turn me from Thy dear side. <coughs> See Thy five wounds of bleeding. Oh, Prince of Heaven, how He died. Died for me. Died that I might uh, condemn in the chains of sin, in the prison house of hell, condemned guilty, going away to be destroyed forever. And somebody took my place. And then the prior year, when I was about 18, 20 years old, one day the Holy Spirit, I said, well, who am I? Where did I come from? Where am I going? He said, he took your place. You were going there. He took your place. There he is. I said, oh, Lamb of God. <laughs> Oh, Lamb of God, I come, I come. Thank you. Nothing in my arms I bring. I have nothing to offer you, Lord. Just simply to thy cross I cling. That's all I got. And he tucked me in. He clothed me like the father with a prodigal son. Put a new garment upon me. The garment not of mine. His garment of his righteousness. He put upon me and a wedding ring upon my finger that will be with the bride that day. Now, the fatty calf has been killed and we're rejoicing because I was once dead and now I'm alive. I was once lost and now I'm found. <laughs> Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. A worse than Barabbas. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. <laughs> it was grace that taught my heart to fear. It was grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. <laughs> when we've been there 10,000 years, bright shining as the sun, no more stars but sun, we'll have no less days to sing His praise than when we first begun. We're in eternity then. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because He first loved us. Oh, how wonderful. Turn with me now to Exodus, will you? 21st chapter. The exhortation of His Spirit. Now we're going to speak now of how to receive I showed you and tell you the results. There it is. Now, how do you receive the mark of the beast? And I'll show you what your doom is there. My mark of the beast. Exodus, the 21st chapter. Take it out of the Old Testament so that you can see. Over here also in the New Testament, I have plenty of scriptures laying here that we all know. Now, let's read. Now, these are the judgments which thou shalt set before them. If thou buy a Hebrew servant, now remember, not the Hebrew, that's a believer, see. A Hebrew servant, six years he shall serve. And in the seventh, he shall go out free for nothing. If he came in by himself, he shall go out by himself. If he was married, then his wife shall go out with him. If his master give him a wife, she have borne him sons or daughters. The wife and her children shall be her masters, and he shall go out himself. I'm not going to... I, I, I know my time's going. Excuse me, Brother Neville. But I've I got to sink this in, brother. Look here. It ain't what your mother is. What your father is, it's you. Amen. Not your wife. See, his wife didn't count. His children didn't count. It's him. No matter what, your mother might have been a saint, your father might have been a saint. So was Esau's father and mother. But he was a rastabout. But, he, but it's an individual affair with you. Say, my father's a preacher. That don't have nothing to do with you. My mother's a godly woman. Oh, she's in heaven. That might be right. But what about you? It's you. And if the servant... Now, here's where... Now, watch this mark of the beast now. Now... 
I, I haven't got time to go back in order because it's 20 minutes still. But I want to tell you. Now, there come a time that was called every seventh year. That was six years. On the seventh year, Bible students, ministers and things sitting around here knows this to be true. It was called, the seventh year was called the Jubilee year. <laughs> Everything rested. There's no crops planted on the seventh year. The land rested. Everything. They just gleaned. See? Everything rested on the seventh year. And on the seventh year, there was a, a priest that sounded a trumpet. And if a man had been a slave, I don't care what his debts was, he was freed. Amen. Now that's a type of the gospel trumpet. Amen. You might have served the devil all these years in chains with drinking, smoking, gambling, sin, dirty things. No matter what you've done, but when you hear the gospel trumpet sound, it's a sign that you can go free. You can go. Faith cometh by hearing of the Word of God. Now you've heard the full gospel. You don't have to stay bound any longer. Now if you just sit and say, oh, I listened to it, but I didn't hear it. <laughs> All right. Then it ain't for you. It's for those who hear it. All right. If you can hear, now watch what he said here. Now to prove this, now watch real close and keep your thinking on now for the next two or three minutes. And if the servant, that's the man that was could be set free, shall plainly say, I love my master. Oh, I like to go to dances. I ain't giving up my dances for nobody. I ain't giving up this, that, or the other for nobody. My wife, my children, the things of this earth that I love... Oh, look here, Brother Branham. I'm going to tell you. Do you mean I have to, you don't have to stop nothing? You just come in. It stops itself. But, but you say, well, I wouldn't do that. I don't have to do that. I belong to church, and I'm just as good as you or anybody else. All right, brother. Sorry. You hear what's the truth. Well, now, listen here. Ain't Father, Son, Holy Ghost? Well, if you want to keep that way, just go right ahead. You've heard what the trumpet sounded. Amen. You heard the note it give. And the Bible said, oh, God, look at that. Wouldn't that make me a text right now for the next hour? If the trumpet gives an uncertain sound. Amen. If your denomination says Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, that don't sound like the trumpet. Amen. If the trumpet gives an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself for war? Amen. If servants shall plainly say, I love my master, I, I love the devil, it, it's making me do these things, that's all right. Now, I don't think, I think you're just too narrow-minded up there. That I just think you're too narrow. All right. I love the things. I, I think we ought to have these big things like this and do this uh, world. We have dances. We have bunk on our church and things like that. And we all have a good time. And they're just as good as they're that bunch you got up there. Okay. All right. All right. And I will not go out in this freedom of the Spirit you talk about. <laughs> then his master, the devil, shall bring him to the judges and shall also bring him to the door. Mm. The what? Who is the door? I set before you a door. When did that mark of the beast come? In this age where the door was set. It's the final marking of the beast. Bring him to the door or to the post. That's the, the Calvary. All right. And his master shall bore his ear. Will bore his ear through with an awl, and he shall serve him forever. Amen. Amen. What do you mean, Brother Brown? If you hear the gospel truth and you refuse to walk in it, then God marks your ear where you'll never hear it no more. Amen. You cross the line between life and death. Then you'll go on with your organization, denomination, the rest of your day forever. Amen. Walk in the light, children. Amen. That's right. You'll serve that master forever. Let, you don't want to see the trumpet sounded, and he can go free. It's God's grace. It's a year of jubilee, the completion. The day of sin is over, brother. I tell every one of you, serving sin, pay for a visible audience. You're everyone that's serving sin. The day of sin is over. Jesus died. You don't have to serve sin no more. 
You don't have to be bowed down to creeds and denominations. He who is the Son has made free, is free indeed. Amen. If you want to go free and be free in the Son, cut loose from all things and serve Him, come on. Amen. But if you don't want to, then your organization, your master, whoever your servant, will put a mark on your ear and you won't be able to hear it anymore. If God ever speaks to your heart to come, this is the time, and you refuse it, then you receive His mark hardened from the truth. Amen. There's the seal of the devil. The mark of the beast. See? What does the mark of the beast do? Go about you right back to Romanism, denominationalism, Amen. and you'll never come in and be free. Amen. Serve that forever. There's the mark of the beast. That's hard, friends. That's cutting, but that's what the, I'm not responsible for just what the Bible says. Amen. Now, that was a type in the Old Testament that foreshadowed the hearing of the gospel of good news that you are free. Amen. You don't have to be bound down anymore. You are absolutely free in Christ Jesus. Amen. No more sins and things you don't. You that love the world, the Bible said, if you love the world... Are the things of the world, the love of God is not even in you. Amen. That true? Amen. If you love the world, are the things of the world, the love of God's not in you. Amen. Then what about all these big things that's going on in the world today are in the name of religion? Uh, the things of the world. And people just gossip it right now like a pig in a pig pen. See? Oh, this is fine. Nothing about that. See? They're sealed and marked away. Amen. Now, do you understand what the remnant of the Jews is? 144,000? Where they're sitting waiting? Right at the hour? Can you see now that the foolish virgin that won't take the, uh, would take the oil and will have to rise and be separated their rights and wrongs at the day of the judgment? Do you understand that when the the foolish virgin began to receive just like now that she needed this. She went after it. It was that very minute that the bridegroom came. Then how close are we? Right now. We have now in just a short time. I don't know how much longer it might be. I couldn't say when. I, I don't know. Might be another year. It might be another 10 years, 40 years. Might be 40 minutes. I, I don't know. I can't say. But I know it's near. It's real near. And the Spirit of the Lord... Now it'll come a time where... Uh, first thing you know, the church will just start cooling. Now how many people have, have noticed the cooling off of the church in the last few years? Amen. Sure. What's it going into? Lady Osea. Amen. Where we'll pick up tonight and bring the angel of the Lady Osea in church out. Bring it out there so you can see it. And see his message and what it will be. And at the end of the Lady Osea church age, once she laps over in and spreads out into eternity then. Oh, I just love him, don't you? Amen. Yes, sir. Oh, the what is the what is the seal of God? Holy Ghost. What is the mark of the beast? Rejected. That's the two. One is the seal. Well, there, and how many was on earth that didn't get it? All that was not sealed took the mark of the beast. All that had not the spirit of God had the mark of the beast. The seal of God is the Holy Spirit. The Bible said so. Amen. Every place in the Scripture speaks of it, says it's the mark of God, the seal of God. And all that did not have it was one who rejected And how did they reject it? By refusing to hear it. Amen. Is that right? I remember, how do you get faith? Hearing. Where was it marked? In the hand? No. In the head? No. In the ear. Amen. In the ear. Hearing. What did you scar over the hearing? And no more. You say, no more of that for me. I want nothing else to do with it. I don't want nothing to do with that. It's just like then, Brother Neville, uh, I, I, I'll just let that go to some... I was going to tell you about that impossible for them which are once enlightened, you see, to, get to, to come into the kingdom, you see. It's like them borderline believers. Look... It is impossible for those which were once enlightened to uh, be made partakers of the Holy Ghost, taste of the power of the world, uh, world to come. If they should fall away to renew themselves again to repentance, seeing that they were crucified to themselves, the Son of God, 
and bring him to an open shame and count the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified with an unholy thing. See, for the elect to do that is absolutely, totally impossible. Amen. He could not do it. See? Because what would he do? See? But uh, counting the blood of the covenant. Now, you see, if he's elected and in the group, he cannot do it. It's impossible for him to do it. Now we take and board it right on down. For the rain cometh off upon the earth to dress it in thorns and thistles, which is nigh unto rejection, whose end is to be burned, the wheat's to be taken home to the garden. But the life-giving rain falls on both weeds and wheat. Both of them rejoice and feel the same way about it. When they're glad to see the rain come, but by their fruits... You shall know them. Where they got the fruits of a weed or the fruits of the grain. Now, of the wheat. Now, here's what to make it. Now, to show where this borderline, where this... I'm trying to bring this virgin up to you, see, so you'll, you'll understand. Now, in the borderline believer, watch what's taking place. When they come to Kadesh Barnea, the children of Israel... I just took it back and forth from Genesis and back and forth to Exodus and everywhere else trying to type it for you, see? So the class won't miss it. Now, when these people in, in, the, in the Exodus, when they come to Kadesh Barnea, Kadesh Barnea was the judgment seat of the world at that time. There's where Israel received her judgment seat. That they had just, it was just 11 days from the mount where they received the commandments till they hit the judgment. Eleven days journey by the sea coast, the Bible said. Eleven days journey, and they came to Kadesh, and there they were judged. After God would have tucked them over in about four days, they went come back over here in the wilderness there and wandered around and got the, the commandments and things like that and come back and how what taken place. Then they come over here, and eleven days from there they come to their judgment at Kadesh Barnea. What happened? He take him one out of each tribe and said, Go over and spy out the land and see what kind of a land it is. Well, they all went over and looked. Two of them went in and got a great big bunch of grapes. Oh, a great big bunch of taking two men to pack out. Now, what did they do when they come back and seen what kind of a land it was? They seen the, the, the uh, Amorites and the, and the different ones in there and they said, Why, wow, they're giants. That was, of course, the sons of Cain that had finally got up there in that, that country. He said, uh, they're, they're, they're giants. And said, we are, we're, we're not able to, to take it. They're, 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 their lands are all fenced in and great big walls. And why we look like grasshoppers side of them? What had they done? Why, they had, they had absolutely seen the land. Amen. They tasted the fruit of it. Amen. See, Caleb and Joshua went over and got the, got the evidence and brought it back. Had it on their shoulder. They tasted the fruit. That's right. they never been over there. But Caleb and Joshua went over. Amen. Brought the evidence back. Caleb and Joshua said, we are able to take it. Amen. See? Why? Because Caleb and Joshua was looking to the Word. Amen. God said, the land is yours. It's all full of Amorites and the Habites and all kind of lights over there. But said, it's yours and every place your foot sets up on, I'll give it to you. Amen. That's right. Just keep walking. Amen. It's yours. But they said, oh no, we couldn't have a revival like that. Oh, uh, uh, well, you know what? The Archbishop or the Bishop of the Presbyterian or someone could not kick us all out. <laughs> Go ahead. Amen. That's right. We'll have it. Now, and then these two came back there and said, We're more than able to take it. Hallelujah. For God said so. Let's go get it. But see these borderline believers? They come up far enough to, to taste it. Amen. It tastes fine, yes. Yeah. But oh, we can't do it. Now what is that? Here's a believer today. Now watch this guy right here. God gives him a call. Mm-hmm. All right. Now he gets saved. His mother washes overboard and sends him away to some college to get his education how to preach. Well, he gets out there, he still thinks he, every time he sees women that's immorally dressed, that gets, tears him up. Every time he, he uh, smells cigarettes, he just can't keep from smoking one. He knows that's wrong. He don't want to do that. So he said, Lord, sanctify me. Take that stuff away from me. God said, all right, I'll do that for you, son. Take it all away from me. One night he staggers into a little mission somewhere. 
And he hears the baptism of the Holy Ghost. To say, he's got up on the first step, justification. Got up on the second step, sanctification. Now he's ready for the baptism. See? One, two, three. He's ready for the baptism. When he gets up there, he reads down the Bible. He said, that's exactly what they done. Yeah, that's exactly. That baptism in the name of Jesus, that's what they done. That's right. He said to read that or I read it all through the Bible. He's exactly right on that. Uh, Bishop, what you, none of that nonsense. Oh, I see. Uh, they got the Holy Ghost. They spoke in tongues. They done these things. They heal the sick. Oh, yeah, that's exactly. He's yeah, looking over, you see. He's looking in the borderland. Oh, if I teach that to my church. Oh, I'm Presbyterian Methodist. man. <laughs> Oh, the bishop will throw me out. Well, we just can't do that. We can't have a meeting like that in our church. Every one of them get up and walk out. He who was once enlightened Amen. and have tasted of the heavenly gifts, if he shall fall away from that walk he's taken, Amen. go back to renew himself again unto repentance because he sinned against God. What is, what is sin? Unbelief. Amen. He sinned against God. And what's he done? He's counted the covenant wherewith he was sanctified Amen. as if it was an unholy thing. Amen. And done despite to the works of grace that's brought him up there. Amen. There remaineth no more sacrifice for him. Amen. But a fearful looking for the fiery judgment and the indignation which shall devour their adversary for vengeance belong unto me, said the Lord. For the word of God is sharper, more powerful than a two-edged sword, cutting even to the center of the bone and a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the mind. There you are. There you are. When you see the light, Walk in it. Walk in it. Don't know where you're going, but keep walking. Walking towards Calvary. Keeping a sensible look at Calvary. Walking. Walking. Oh, God, may someday the church, which is a type of Enoch, 500 years he walked before God. Walking. Walking in the light with a testimony that everything God said he did it. He didn't displease him. What the Lord said, do Enoch done it. Now, he was a type, remember. The ark is a type of the Jews, 144,000, that's carried over, which is Noah and his bunch. But Enoch went home just a little bit before the flood. You know that. So Enoch just kept walking in the light. So one day he fell his feet getting off the ground. He just kept walking. <laughs> and he walked on into glory without even dying. That's right. God took him away because he was walking in the light with a testimony that he walked in the light of God. Amen. Kept walking, walking. Let's get on our walking shoes, church. Amen. Keep walking in the light. Beautiful light. It comes where the dewdrops of mercy are bright. Shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus, the light of the world. Let's sing it now. We're walking the light, beautiful light. Oh, come with the dewdrops of mercy are bright. Shine all around us by day and by night. Oh, Jesus, the light of the world. All ye saints of light proclaim, Jesus, the light of the world. Then the bells of Heaven will ring, Jesus, the light of the world. Oh, we walk in the light, such a beautiful light. Oh, come here, the two drops of mercy are bright. Shine. Just a moment now. 
I wonder if there's some in here would like to have the experience of being filled with the Holy Spirit. Say, remember me, Brother Branham. Remember me, church. I want to walk in the light. I want that sweetness. No root of bitterness in me. I want to be just God's servant. Raise your hand. Say, remember me, O Lord. Yeah, 20 hands or more up. Now just keep your heads bowed while we sang softly together. Oh, Jesus, light of the world. We walk in this light. It's such a beautiful light. It comes where the dewdrops of mercy are bright. Shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus, the light of the world. Come all ye saints of light proclaim. Oh, Jesus, he's the light of the world. Then the bells of heaven will ring. Oh, Jesus, he's the light of the world. Oh, we'll walk in this light. It's such a beautiful light. It comes where the dewdrops of mercy are bright. Shine all around us by day and by night. Oh, Jesus, light of the world. Lord Jesus, while they're humming this song, wanting to walk in the light of the gospel, take those precious hearts, Lord. They're yours. Cleanse them. Take all evil, all unbelief out. May Jesus, the light of the world, come in. Handkerchiefs are laying here, Lord, for the sick and the afflicted. Come to them, Lord Jesus, and heal them so that they can walk in the light. Granted, Lord, we thank you for our lesson, for the presence of the Holy Spirit. Been here with us and kept us hours sitting here, people sitting in this hot room waiting. They're expecting and waiting and wondering, Lord. For they realize as they hear the word read that we're at the end time. Nothing left. Just a frolic of the world. And one of these days, the mimics will have to cease. And I pray, God, that you'll save every person that's in divine presence. Save them by your Spirit. And may the Holy Ghost come up on each one of them and fill their hearts with goodness and peace that they'll bring forth the fruit of the Spirit, which is long-suffering, gentleness, peace, patience, meekness, faith, and the Holy Ghost. Grant it, Lord. I'll commit them to thee now for your service in the name of Jesus Christ your son amen we walk in the light let's raise your hands when we sing beautiful light come with
We'll have the baptismal service for about 10 minutes now, 15. Whatever, I think there's a young lady here to be baptized. Is that right? There's several. All right, how many to be baptized this morning and can't come back tonight for the baptismal service this evening? One, two, three. Three that can't come in this afternoon are before the evening service to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you, children. I'm glad that God has set before you the open door and you're ready to walk in now. You're going into the grave that all the old things are dead and buried. I remember your baptism only is an outward expression that something has happened down here. And then we walk in. Get ready. great fellowship. Don't you feel good? Oh, I just feel so good. It seemed like something been in with one of these old-fashioned scrub brushes and just scrubbed me out. A lie so. My brother said, maybe y'all want to be baptized this morning. Make ready the suits so things will be wet tonight. But it's all right if you want to do that. But if you're ready to be baptized this morning, all right. I believe we'll have to move this, won't we, Brother Neville? All right, sir. Now, how many will stay and see the baptizing? Just take a few minutes. And my, maybe you've never seen one go on. If you can't stay, well, then you'd be sure to get back tonight. But I wish you could and stay a few minutes to watch the baptismal church. We'll move this. And there's a big glass up behind here that shows every person going in. It'll be striking to you, I'm sure. We are buried with the Lord in baptism. Amen. Amen. As He died, we are buried unto His death, raised to His resurrection to walk in newness of life. The Lord bless you. How many knows what the lesson tonight is? Lady O'Sean. The last and the climax of the church ages. All right, we'll have the baptismal service, Teddy, if you will. You want to be? Ba- no, I want to ask you. Already been baptized. There's some of them got to leave for Chicago right now. See? Let's pray. Lord Jesus, they have sat and listened the services through. We commit them to you now, Lord, as they go to Chicago. Go with them, Lord. And may each one take this wonderful light and scatter it, Lord, across the city of Chicago, everywhere that they go. Be with them until we meet. May their spirits be anchored in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Yea, to thee, my people, this morning again. Yea, I say unto thee, my servant, I have accepted thee. In the giving forth of my word, I will follow thee and will speak to thee in private. (laughs) Yea, I will show thee thy itinerary. Yea, I will be with thee and will bless thee. Yea, my people, I say unto thee this morning, I am Almighty God. I am using this vessel this morning to come to thee through. I say unto thee, turn not aside from my spirit. Forsake not the voice that speaks to thee. I am with thee as thou wilt be with me. Turn from thy ways and turn from thy thinking. And believe me, for I am with thee. If thou wilt come to me and follow me in baptism, I will bless thee and preserve thee. I will bring thee in the fullness of the consummation. Yea, I have spoken. Will I not fulfill it? Yea, saith the Lord. Just raise up her hands and say, Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank Thank you, Lord. We recognize that, Lord, that you... One day the Spirit fell upon a man in the Bible and just told all the secret of God what was to take place. Father, we know that you're still the same God. And here you fall upon this humble little pastor here, Lord. This morning... That was once back there in the Nicolaitan. But you shook him. He saw the light and walked out. And here his heart's so open until you'll speak to him until he don't even know what he's going to say. Hallelujah. And stand up and let the Holy Spirit move through him in a voice of prophecy to us. Thank you, Father. And I'll, I'll look for you for my itinerary. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> um,
Did you see what that was? Watch the tone of that one woman's voice speaking and watch the interpretation come back to the same tone. See? There is two different women. Not where they even know one another or not. They don't. They don't know one another. There's the Holy Spirit watching the tune of the voice like that. Don't you realize that that's Christ in the midst of the people here? As well? You have something you want to read, Brother Pat? Go ahead. 22.16 of Revelation I read in the name of the Lord Jesus. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. Amen. Now that's spiritual divine leading. See the Holy Spirit moving through the laity, going out there speaking. Oh, isn't he wonderful? To think, friends, that's the same thing the Bible spoke of. And it's here today. We don't have to wonder about it no more. Oh, come receive him, my precious people. Come receive him. Teddy, while we're making ready for the baptism, I pray God will make your hearts ready. Where he leads me, I will follow. Oh, All right. Amen. Amen. You want to help me here now, brother? We'll get it, brother. Brown. by the exhortation of His Word that you come and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Remember, I do that because that the Bible constrains us to do that. And, and Paul said to do it and if an angel taught anything else, let him be accursed. And I, I want to declare at the end of my road like he did, I have not shunned to declare to you the whole counsel of God as I know it. Is. I see. No man's blood upon us. Oh, don't you love Him? Amen. Oh, I love Him. All right, let's stand while we sing our dismissing song. All right, until that time, we'll take the name of Jesus with you, child of
can talk about me. You can talk about me just as much as you please. Just as much as you please. You can talk about me. You can talk about me just as much as you please. You, you can talk about me just as much as you please. I'll talk about you down on my knees. All of my sins are washed away. I've been redeemed. Jesus and me, my Jesus and me, we both agree, we both agree, my Jesus and me, my Jesus and me, we both agree, my Jesus and me, we both agree, I love Jesus and Jesus loves me, all of my sins are washed away, I've been redeemed. We both agree, the devil and me, the devil and me, we both agree, the devil and me, we both agree, I hate the devil and the devil hates me, all of my sins are washed away, I've been redeemed. The pastor and me, the pastor and me, together vow, together vow. The pastor and me, the pastor and me, together vow. The pastor and me, together vow. I'll fight for victory right now. All of my sins are washed away. I've been redeemed. The saints and me. The saints and me have made a pact, have made a pact. The saints and me, the saints and me have made a pact. The saints and me have made a pact. We're gonna help each other stay on track. All of my sins are washed away. I've been redeemed. I've been redeemed, I've been redeemed By the blood of the Lamb, by the blood of the Lamb I've been redeemed, I've been redeemed By the blood of the Lamb I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb Saved and sanctified I am All of my sins are washed away I've been redeemed, I've been redeemed Wow, was a long